Shannon Control, good evening. Firefly 235, TBM on the ground at Shannon with information Delta, looking to pick up our IF4 to Cork and we're parked at the general aviation ramp. Firefly 235, Shannon Control, hello, cleared to Cork. Currum 3, Bravo, departure runway 24. Initial climb altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 6464. Cleared to Cork via the Kuru 3 Bravo departure, runway 24. Initial climb, altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 6464 for Firefly 235. Firefly 235, read back, correct. Hello, hello. Starting on March 11th, 2024, we carry on from our VO4 ATC series 
as we introduce our IA4 ATC series. Over the next 10 weeks, we're going to learn all the phraseology, what to say, when to say it. We get to refine our IA4 skills, be it for general aviation or even the airliners. All our voice communication will take place on Discord. We even have some custom ATIS. Cork Airport Information Foxtrot 1700 Zulu Wind 320 at 18 knots. All the course material, including a comprehensive ground school document, will be available over on our website, twotonemurphy.com, that also includes the course registration and flight planning submission. We've created a custom network to operate all our flights on. And the beautiful thing, this is for Xbox and PC pilots. Take the next step in enhancing your flight simulation experience with an IF4 ATC course, where we take you from the entry level when it comes to your communication skills, all the way up to completing your very first flight on the VATSIM network. For those pilots on Xbox, we got you covered. We'll operate a full check ride using our own infrastructure. Our objective? Make sure everyone passes. This is all about community helping community, people helping people. Regardless of your skill, regardless of your capability, we're here to help. You're gonna learn, you're gonna have fun, and we're gonna do something awesome. For more information, head on over to twotonemurphy.com forward slash IFR. Be sure to register for the course as one lucky winner will win a 12 month subscription to Navigraph for free. So I hope to see you on March 11th, 2024 at 20 hundred Zulu time on YouTube and on Twitch as we start our IF4 ATC course.
Hello. Hello. Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to the start of a new week as we bring conclusion to a 10-week series that we've been running following the Gallic Wars. Tonight in part 10, Alea Iacta Est, the die has been cast. The die is cast. We're about to cross the Rubicon and I tell you, it's been, it's been an event as we follow Gaius Julius Caesar as uh, he rambles into the regions of Gaul for some 10 years. He's been causing all sorts of uh, drama, right? Switzerland, France, Germany, Belgium, England. We're on the home stretch, heading all the way back. And tonight, well, we have some details to go through. So, we see the culmination of Julius Caesar's monumental campaign in Gaul as we ramble, right? Uh, the transition to a pivotal moment in Roman history. This final episode bridges the gap between Caesar's military conquests and the political upheaval that followed, setting the stage for the end of the Roman Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire. Sounds kind of... doesn't it, right? Our flight tonight, we're taking the sleek Vision Jet by FlightFX as we depart Dijon Airport, Lima Foxtrot, Sierra Delta, and we're going to head down towards Turin. Um, which is Lima India Mike Foxtrot. Then over the scenic landscapes of Italy, we're going to do a landing at Florence, Lima India Romeo Quebec. And then finally, back to the capital of Rome as we land at Herb Airport, Lima India Romeo Uniform. Some 460 nautical miles on this evening's trip. And we have some information as we kind of, you know, get a summary of what's happened over the last 10 episodes and indeed the last 10 years of the Gallic Wars. As we see what happens, we try and bridge the gap between the end of the Republic and, of course, the start of the Roman Empire. Huge part of history, this one, and uh, very, very interesting. This is where, like, I, I love this part of it, right? The Gallic Wars and all the building blocks leading up to this, it's fantastic. But, like, once we get into, you know, the, the creation, if you like, of the Roman Empire, how the whole thing kind of really started off, this is fascinating. This bit of history repeats itself throughout all time, all the time. Like, so many places, history repeats itself. Change the names, change the, you know what I mean, the campaigns or whatever. But there's a lot of similarities with how power is seized and then how nations, if you like, uh, kind of, you know, take over. So it's very interesting, lads. So I'd like to welcome you in. We also showed you a trailer of the upcoming ATC series starting next Monday. March the 11th, kicking off at the same time, 2000 Zulu, and uh, that's 10 weeks. At, at, at least 10 weeks, as uh, we're going to be tackling the IFR side of the house when it comes to our ATC communication. So really looking forward to that. We've got a lot of ground to cover, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I was only chatting with Gibbo and Ranbog over the weekend, and the stuff the lads are able to do, it's frightening. And we know he's not here because he doesn't like history, but a tip of the cap to Gibbo uh, for releasing the new Firefly Air livery for the Phoenix uh, Block 2, version 2, Block 2. Anyway, it's really, really nice and it's available now over on the website if you want to grab it. And um, I'm going to press some buttons as we welcome everybody in. So exclamation point route will give you the route. As I said, I'm flying in the vision jet. It's parked here beside us. We're going to be jumping into the aircraft, getting it up and going, and uh, we shall commence our flight. I'm on live weather, uh, which is always a challenge. So we'll check that one out. But I'd like to welcome you all in. Hello to everyone here on Twitch. And of course, everyone watching on YouTube. Very happy Monday to you as we get this week started. So we have a tarnished moss man who's rambled into the chat. Great to see you. Adora in his ear. Super Ty has rambled in. Happy Monday. Fierce Wolf. Looking fierce. And Wolfie. Um, I fell off my chair on Friday night, just to get right. So I'm not going to be moving very fast, <laughs> right? I've limited my movements at my desk, so I can't fall off the chair. Just in case you're hoping for it, you know, a part two. Uh, but anyway, Martel, good to see you. Tarnished Moss Man, welcome in. Dragon 617 in the house. The end of the Roman Empire flight. Indeed, it's been quite the journey, hasn't it? Ten weeks of this, lads. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I probably bored some Hello people there. to sleep. But it's grand. It's fine. We're moving on to something else. That's a big 10 for good buddy. And the gas thing is, someone else is going to be, like, you know, bored to sleep when we do the other stuff. It's great. You can never get it right. Everyone laughed at me falling off the chair, though. Funny that, you know, skull yourself on stream and, yeah, great, you're brilliant. 
I roared myself to sleep. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Zed Ryder's in the house. Good to see you. Sean Dale, welcome in. Muse fan bursts in the door. He says, Ash, sure tis yourselves. How he is? He is mad bunch of yokes. Happy Monday. You're very welcome in, Muse. Hope the new PC is behaving and you're getting the frame rateage uh, that you deserve, my friend. That you deserve. Night Zepp is here. Very good evening to you. Vacuum is in the house. Rambog Mord. Very happy Monday to you, my guy. Viper Strike is here. He says, good afternoon, Murph and Fireflies. I'm at a home on Saturday after a nice vacation to Mexico. Now I'm catching up to the top of the Premiership. Nice, nice, nice. Great to see you. Sun Jammer is here. You're very welcome in. Jan Race has subscribed to the channel for 30 months. Ooh, so many months, he says. Thank you very, very much indeed, man. Shuffle Shoes shuffles in. AJH Don, hope you're well. Spitfire RAF 100, welcome in. You're looking well. You're looking very well. Um, now let me see. Rob MCR. Happy Monday. Onboard Simulations is here. Good to see you, my guy. Eagle Airways. Aaron, how are you? He says, good evening, mate. Off to bed. Up early in the morning. Catch your Wednesday stream. You have a very pleasant evening. And, well, have a great day at work tomorrow. Patrick47 is here. That's <laughs> your Patrick. How are you? Patrick, it's the start of a week. Tell me, how are the emotions on a Monday, you know, come Friday, we know the grand, but on a Monday, how do you get on? Uh, Toto2495 is in the house. Welcome in, Toto. Good to see you, man. Stick Hello, Figure man. has subscribed to the channel for 18 months, man. Thank you very, very much indeed. The, the, the absolute bananas, the support, isn't it? Now, who's over here on YouTube? I have to say hello to everyone. Robinson Racing is here. Lauren, a very good to see you. You're very welcome in. Uh, now, let me see. Creebor Aerial Productions. You're very welcome aboard. Happy Monday to you. And uh, I, I, I still haven't figured this uh, multiple screens. I, I'll get there, you know. I put the car in swinger, baby. <laughs> Jesus, there's things happening on my stream. I'll get to this now in a jiffy. <laughs> Iron Knob Airways, good to see you. Uh, who else is here? Uh, BJ Mac. Is it Nasher Media? Am I flying the updated version? Uh, I, th I think this is the most up-to-date version of the Vision Jet. Yeah, we'll give it a batch. Uh, Randy Godwin is here. Good to see you, Randy. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Jiddish. Dankar, you're very welcome aboard as well. And to all our YouTube friends, thank you so much indeed, lads, for tuning in. And uh, it was great to see you. Dougal McTavish, the chairman, has rambled in, taking a position. Uh, what, was, what was the name of the stick? It's not a cane. What was the name of a uh, sergeant major? Right, he'd have to, you know. What? I'd be on the square. What was the name of the, the stick hey, thing? I need to know what that is. I need one. Well, Dougal, I'm sure he has one. Do you know... But yes, uh, now where are we at? Skidmuck Mark. Hello, Mark. Good to see you, man. Soaring AJ has rambled in. AJ HD, man. Fallen up falls in. Good to see you. Zythe is in the house. Captain Meowingtons is here. You're very welcome aboard. Buttons, Murph. Uh, Muse fan, Firefly 235, you've taken off on the wrong runway. Oh, no, the wrong taxiway. Remember I did that when Skep was controlling? Was that in Zurich or Geneva? She told me to turn left and I turned right. Oh, wait. No, she told me to turn right and I'll turn left. <laughs> it's grand. I like a challenge. I'm the challenge. Uh, but yes, Hemingbird is here. She says, a policeman demanded I have a nap today, but I wasn't hired. I got nicked for resisting arrest. <laughs> Brilliant. Happy Monday, Hemingbird. I hope you're well. Uh, now, where are we at? Uh, we're over here. P.S. Mirandai. Hello there. Ten months. He says, where's my IF4 Vatsim classes? I need them on my table today. And next week, we're starting the IF4. Dude, thank you so much. In 10 months. Where did that come from? Unbelievable. Goblin Zeus is here. Good evening. Problem. Insert disk error for Microsoft Flight Sim, says Goblin Zeus. Uh, turn it off. Uh, close the Xbox console thingy, Majig. Or the whatever they call it. The Xbox companion thingy. Shut all that off. Try and open the sim again. It'll fail. Then restart your PC and then you should be good to go. Something like that. Do you know? Um, Willow, how much? Good to see you. You're very welcome in. Hemingbird, thank you for the bits. 200 bits. Look at that. Jesus. Uh, Filthy, welcome aboard. Gary JF is in the house. DJing. DJing has been flat out making beautiful looking air, uh, aircraft. And he's currently working on a Vans. We need to check it out very soon. And uh, he's doing incredible things. DJing, 27 months subscribed to the channel. Thank you very, very much indeed. My guy, the support is absolutely incredible. Thank you very, very much. Now, Martel, good to see you. Oz Nomad is here. Welcome aboard. It's kind of busy. Sterling, welcome in. He says, g'day all. Uh, it's a great day to fly. Well, the weather is looking a bit cagey, but thankfully we're in a capable aircraft, uh, is the Vision Jet. But yes, Sun Jammer's in the house. 
He says, uh, Fear Liebenter Homine. I speak in Latin. Mahan Buhul. Ah, Toshe. Brilliant. <laughs> that works. Yeah, sure. Sai 120, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Uh, let me see now. Martel, he says, can't wait for the IFS or IFR course as he subscribes for 30 months. All the 30 month subs, lads. These are 30 months, though. Do you know what I mean? Oh, God almighty. I mean, when we first started, you'd never you'd never thought we'd get the 30 months, though. Do you know what I mean? It's, well, he's still on the telly. Turn him off, will you? Uh, but Jess, thank you very much. Aim in 1973. Are you planning on performing any stunts on this stream? Oh, Jesus. No, none at all, Eamon. Epic Fool is here. He says, Jesus, tis fierce crowded in here already. Sorry there, lads. Just need to make my way to the bar. It's good to see you, Epic Fool. Welcome in, man. Uh, Canoe Head. He says, is this the last of the Gallic War series? I don't know how I feel about this. Right, I'm I'm kind of the same. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. Do you know, it's been great. Like, the history is one part of it, which I, you know, I love. But it's the adventure with you guys. It's flying. And, like, I've I've flown to places I haven't flown to before in The Sim, right? And I'm learning things whilst being there, plus getting to hang out with you guys. It's been an amazing journey. It really, really has. So, um, yes, tis a bittersweet uh, kind of finish to this series. Uh, Takey Decimus is in the house. Hello, Takey. Good to see you, man. Zybok Doc calling from Denmark. Hello from Tipperary. I hope you're very well indeed. Uh, has it been 10 weeks? It has. Scorpio49 rambles in. Is it a Merlot tonight? He says, good evening, Murph, uh, and all in chat. I won't be flying with you tonight. Have a good one. Lots of enjoyage. Scorpio, I can tell you, it won't be the same without you. But uh, we'll do our best. Welcome in, man. Uh, QC Frank is here, 11 months with Prime. Thank you very, very much indeed, Frank. Hope you're well. Uh, now, we're over here somewhere. Jamaumu, you're very welcome in. Wombat49, he says, Good day, all you dudes and dudettes. How are you, Wombat? Good to see you, mate. Uh, B. Carlo is in the house. Good to see you. Uh, I'm down here now. We're catching up. It is busy, isn't it? Have you fixed the dent in the floor, Murph? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Scott. No, I, well, I, I have a mark on my left knee. No, my right knee. Yeah, my right knee. It's grand, though. I had to do a bit of explaining to the missus. She's like, well, what happened to you? You have to watch it. What do you mean you have to watch it? It's been recorded. <laughs> and I got a good giggle over. Uh, did you ever find your pink heels or whatever you were looking for? They're not pink uh, heels. They're pink slippers that look like clogs. Gibbo got them for me because they sound like that. <laughs> we just always reinventing the wheel. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, now, where we're at, we're over here, look. Uh, catching up now. Uh, no, Chase. Uh, Flyer10, very good evening to you. Robbie613 Studio is in the house. Good to see you, Robbie. Hope you're well, my dude. Englewood Online, you're very welcome aboard. Where's Gibbo? Why is the beautiful Vision Jet does not have a Firefly painting yet? That's a very good question, P.S. Mirandai. Uh, Gibbo has hung up his um, uh, Bob Ross apron and his easel and his paintbrushes because he Hello spent there. way too long these are his words, way too long creating the awesome livery that is for the Phoenix. He's made a terrible blunder, though, because he's done such a great job making that, we're all going to be like, hey, Gibbo, will you, will you do another one? Go on, do another one, will you? And he'd be like, no, not going to happen. But yes, got your seatbelt on. That's a good idea, actually. But I, no, no, if I fall the next time, the chair comes, no, no, Jesus, no. Echo Tango is in the house, tier two, 36 months. He says, wow, that's almost eight years. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. That's insane support. Very, very kind of you. God almighty, 36 months as well. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, I found out about you falling off your chair thanks to a certain Russian magician. K yeah, I took a, a page out of Keen Afford's book with a bang, you know. Uh, Kazaki Flyer's in the house. <laughs> he says, how are you, Murph? Do you need wheelchair chocks? They'd be handy, wouldn't you? Chocks away. Malton Aviation. He says, hey, from Spain. Hello, how are you, man? Hope you're enjoying things. Jefferson 2001, the man, the myth, the legend, has rambled in to say, happy Monday. Good to see you, Jepson. How are you, man? You're looking well. Uh, very well. Some say Jepson is off modelling. Uh, that's what I've heard. Never let the truth get in the way of a good rumour. That's what I always say. Uh, now, or never let a good rumour get away in... What was it? Never let a rumour get in the way of the truth. I can't remember. Who's in charge? Anyway, uh, we'll move on. Paparazzi is here. He says, good evening, we're from Fireflies. Another great day to watch and lurk and hope everyone has good health insurance. <laughs> Be grand. Totally fine. Look at this. Squid, thank you very much indeed. Gifting 10 tier 1 subs to the channel. 10 of them. Thank you very, very much indeed. That is insane support. 
Lads, if you've just received a tier one sub with thanks to Squid11160, well, do be sure to say thank you. It's very, very generous of him, and, well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, the emotions are grand, says Patrick. Uh, I'm a bit tired after being in Kerry for the weekend. All right. Uh, Calvin Train, or Calvin Tran, it looks like. Good to see you. Welcome in. You're very welcome in. Uh, the Limbic says, hi, team. Work lurking as usual on a... Oh, no, wait. Work lurking as usual on a Tuesday morning. Oh, well, happy Tuesday. The Limbics is literally in the future. What's it like over there? Kanzui is in the house. Good to see you. You're very welcome in. Are there any new NVIDIA filters for Microsoft Flight Sim, says Kelvin. Uh, I'll show mine here now in a second. We'll have a look. A baton. Is it a baton? A pay stick. Jesus. A swagger. A swagger stick? Geneva? Wait, what? Is Murphy grown a beard? Two cats. It's been 84 years since I'm trying to grow this thing. And like, if it's very, very windy, I go outside like this. Just to make sure the wind doesn't blow it away. I've always wanted like a, well, not really a Gandalf, but like, do you know what I mean? Sometimes I draw on it, you know, just to give it that kind of depth and, and contrast, do you know? Uh, good to see you too, Katz. You're looking well. A shillelagh is a wooden walking stick or club. No, no, no. A shillelagh stick is something very different. But it is very shillelagh. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, uh, your other right, right? I have no idea. I slept and then 10 months later, says PS Mirandai. It's nuts, isn't it? Uh, Guinness, thank you very much indeed. Subscribing at tier one for two months. Thank you very, very much indeed. That's insane support tonight, lads. Thank you all so very much. Goblin Zeus, hope you're sorted now. Keith the Farrell is here. He says, hi, I'm Murph and Mrs. Two-Tone. Uh, auto F, is auto FPS any good? Yes, it's very good. Highly recommend you grab it. There's a third one after coming out. Uh, I was watching VR Flights and Guy. Have a search on YouTube for VR Flights and Guy because he's checked out another auto FPS sort of a gadget and it looks a little bit more polished than the one I showed off there last uh, Wednesday. Uh, but th they all do kind of the same stuff, but yeah, one of them is very, very good. I sense a left right issue. It's grand, Canoe Head. Uh, Larry, good to see you. I love that linguistic uh, Ellison. Weejits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, now, let me see. B3, kind. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. You're welcome in. Uh, what is used for throttle controls? I use the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog for my throttles and then have a verbal control for my joystick. You know, now we need an IE or an IEA livery. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Now, uh, Steve, good to see you. It takes a lot of time to make a livery. Uh, you really have to be into it. Absolutely, Steve. Absolutely. It's it's a it's it's a disciplined kind of a thing to do, you know. Uh, are you planning on falling again? No, thanks, Scorpio. No. <laughs> so when uh so when do we hang on now, wait. So when are we going to get a new Murphy Law and Gravity? Oh, when are we going to get one? Soon, soon. Uh, right, we're catching up. The future is cold and mess. That's never good. Uh Tuka says, Murph, give it a week and I'll have a I've grown a spare one for you. Excellent, excellent. Uh, now, where are we at? A grey beard. What are you talking about, Eamon? It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I saw for your Flight Sim Guys video yesterday. It looks really good, says Muse. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Steve has done a few. He has. Steve has done some cracking liveries. Uh, Renoir, you're very welcome aboard. Kanzui says, Gibbo love making delivery. He really did, says Kanzui. Kanzui, now, there's another mad lad who can make just stunning liveries. I don't know how you do I just, I don't have the pay. Well, I do have the patience, but like... It, it depends, like, I can make a lovely livery if it's just like, ah, yes, here's a logo, it's grand, you know, but, like, when you get into, like, lines and designs and all this sort of jazz, oof, crazy stuff, lads, absolutely crazy. Uh, Lightworks, laser engraving, you're very welcome aboard. He says, hello from Cyprus. Hello from Tipperary. I bet you it's nice in Cyprus. Is it warm, at least? Do you know? Right, Ari uh, Halprin. Good to see you, Ari. How are you, man? How are you? Uh, now, I think we're catching up. I think we have caught up. So we'll now we'll move to another screen. And I'll do so uh, by moving backwards for dramatic effect. And we're over here. <laughs> nearly ran over me toe. I'm not going to... Uh, right. Anyway, shit, it's grand. Right. So, bit of soundage. So here we are on the ground at Lima Fox Sierra Delta. And we're going to be going for a flight here now. So, quick check in on Navigraph. And uh, this is really handy because we can check out what the weather is doing. So if we open up the airports and we'll go to Dijon, we'll open up the airport and do we have weather? We do. So winds are 170 at four knots. Okay. 170 at four. So go ahead and click this little gadget appear and be playing. So if you're unsure, you can go to information and runways and this is going to tell you the best possible runways for your departure. You're looking for all the greens, essentially, right? All the greens. So runway 19er is going to be our runway for departure. Uh, division jet, it's sufficient length, uh, 1,200 metres. 
Uh, if you're in anything kind of bigger, runway 17, that's 2,400 meters. That's massive. You'll get airliners off that one. Uh, we're going to go for the slightly smaller one here. Division jet, we should get airborne around 90 knots, give or take. Give or take, right? So, um, <clears throat> right, that's what we're going to do. So, we're pretty much flying... I want to say, well, they are direct. There's no SIDs or stars or waypoints because, well, we bit of mileage on this one. So uh, our first arrival is going to be down here to Torino. And uh, again, we'll be checking out the weather when we get down there. So if we go to airports and let's have a look at Torino. So we can just type it in, Lima India Mike Fox. And if we open up the airport itself, we can get the weather. Winds are 230 at three knots. Check out the runways. It's telling us 18, but it's not actually used. Probably because you have the mountains right beside it. But I like a challenge. And let's see what happens. Otherwise, we have a slight tailwind. Do you know what I mean? So uh, that's grand. So here we have the Vision Jet. This is from Flight FX. And it's absolutely beautiful. They've done an, an amazing job on this aircraft. And uh, I'm really looking forward to their upcoming projects as well. So we're going to hop inside the cockpit, get ourselves up and running, uh, and then we're going to kind of tickety-boo. So I was watching the telly. We'll close that, right? And uh, we do have our door open. We'll close that. The animations on this, like, it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right, okay, so we're going to get ourselves situated here now. We're going to be doing, uh, well, we'll be chatting during our flight all about, you know, the Romans and stuff. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to bring up my tablet. And we have a couple of options here. So if you look outside the aircraft, I do have the luggage door open. Uh, and there's no luggage in there. Jesus. So we better put some luggage in there. Uh, ooh, family vacation. That's what Caesar would have brought. He would have brought a couple of Samsonite bags and we'll just throw it in there. Yep. So uh, that's brilliant. We can now close the luggage door. Excellent. Covers and protectors, we can remove those. Now we can go on the external power, but I'm just going to go from a battery start here. We should be okay with that. Uh, external power, if you just click it on, you'll hear it. Batteries come on automatically. And then you have your GPU just outside the aircraft. And it's all connected up. You can see where everything connects to. It's done very, very well. So, uh, we'll disappear that. And when it disconnects, battery should, should stay on. So, what are our options in here? So, checking out the aircraft. Uh, I don't think I can move these. No couple of stores coming in so let's look at our main panel here so batteries are on we're going to put our strobe lights on because we don't have any beacon light uh oxygen we can go ahead and turn this on uh they'll be here and our fresh air that seems to be working landing gear handle is in the down position exactly where we want it uh we get some internal lighting turned on here as well and what else we want to do we fuel pumps and then our engine start so we can do a couple of things we'll go through the uh initial tests for the aircraft i'm going to jump over to the mfd aircraft systems and we're going to go to the system test so i'm going to engage the pre-flight test and it goes through the fire warning stall shaker all this sort fire. of jazz fire 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 that's fire. okay we can see our cast system is telling us stall, stall. warning stall stall warning stall. and we might hear the shaker as well okay ready to execute that's all good for us uh, now we can also put in our uh, initial checks or initialization right um let me see here now so if we go to utilities uh, initialization so the pre-tests are done so we'll go to the next page we're going to say right uh, initiate our fuel so we'll do a fob sync a fob you're going to go in and actually measure the fuel on board we've 269 gallons that'll do and we have all this set up next is our weight and balance and we can set this to what we have in the aircraft so if you go to again sync it and um, crew plus stores 200 let's go with that payload two passengers yeah why not uh, and then all our weights are put in we have another tick box and then our last check here then is going to be the flight plan we'll do the flight plan here very quickly indeed so flight plan uh on our pfd let me see here now uh bearing obs sorry on our mfd let's go back to mfd and i need to put in a flight plan so we're going to put in a flight plan and we'll start typing things in so our origin here is uh now we can type this in either so it's lima fox sierra delta we're going to enter that and our destination, our final destination, is all the way back uh, to Rome. It's going to be at Lima, India, Romeo, Uniform, Herb. And then we're going to have some en route waypoints along the way. So the first one is going to be Torino, Lima, India, Mike Fox. Uh, Lima, India, Mike Fox. And then our second en route is going to be in Florence, which is Lima, India, Romeo, Quebec. 
uh, Pretola. And that's how our flight plan is going to look. So we're going to click on the back page. We're going to go back into our initialization. And we should be good to go now on our flight plan. Quick scroll down here. Flight plan is done. We're going to accept the initialization. We're good to go. PFD comes up on this screen. MFD can go in on this screen. And if we wanted to have a look at the map, we can check it out from here. We can zoom out and zoom in and do all this jazz. So we'll just zoom out, make sure that's what our flight plan looks like. If you can't see it, you can make the screen go full. And we just ramble over here. So that's our flight plan. We're going to be crossing the Alps all the way back down into Rome itself. Perfect. So reduce the screen. We have uh, traffic up on the right hand side. Now I can actually change out the charts if I wish. So if I move the roller ball over, right, uh, I can I can show anything I want. You can have the two screens, right? So for instance, I can put my checklist up there, right? Or we can put our charts, right? So if I go into, let me see now, that's sim brief. So if we go into charts, and if you want to see our options here, so this is Lima Fox Sierra Delta. This is the airport chart. And again, we can zoom in and see what's happening. Uh, we should be able to just kind of move the mouse around as well to see what we're doing. So we're going for a runway one niner. That's going to be our departure here. But we're looking good so far. So it's great having this level of um, just complexity, having Navigraph and Simbrief, everything linked into the aircraft. And for our upcoming IFR course, the Vision Jet I would highly recommend this if you're new to flying kind of the jets. It's slower, it's easier to manage, yet it's capable of following, you know, the published SIDs and stars. We'll get into all that at a later date, but certainly it works very, very well. Uh, right, so we can have the charts there. don't really need them. I am going to put traffic on this side. I have all my maps here that I need to worry about. That's looking good. So for my next trick, we're going to start up the engine. A very, very uh, sophisticated system on the Vision Jet. We turn on the fuel pump. We get an audible sound to say, well, it's doing the stuff. And then we're going to hit the engine start. Are we ready? So we can monitor all of this, right? So N1 and N2 are rising. ITT is looking good. And oil pressure and temperature is rising also. We don't need to worry about fuel valves or anything else. She's good to go. Another one that's super easy is the Honda Jet. Yes, Pierce Mirandai. Absolutely. Absolutely. Check 670. I prefer it that way. Uh, while this might have some lives, uh, and we saw in December, I'm impressed you have learned all of this, though, but you've done... But you've done well uh, on all the old days, old ways, too. Check 6. I prefer it that way. What way, Check 6? Uh, oh, I flew when none of this was there. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, nice. Uh, who's this now? Fabii. Hello, Fabii. You're welcome in. You're welcome in. Such a difficult bird to start up. Yeah, isn't it? Tech 6. Yeah, no, I got you, man. I got you. Uh, MDA009. Very good day to you, sir. Hope you're well. Good morning. Okay, so that's a good start in the engine. We can verify that by looking at our instruments. Also, outside, there's beautiful sounds on this. It's a really, really nice aircraft. Right, so I'm going to go back to my tablet here because I have a couple of things to do. We have our headphones, our Bose headphones, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, remove the wheel chocks, and we're going to go to our Bose head headset. And you can do two things. You can just grab the headphones to get them off your glare shield. But you can also activate the noise reduction. Noise cancellation, and it makes things nice and quiet, you see. That's the sound you have. Meanwhile, you can hear everything else doing what they need to do. Or we can cancel that. I do like the sound of the aircraft. So I'm finished with that. Back up to our main panel. Generators need to come on now, so we're not going to absolutely drain the battery. Uh, strobes are already on. Oxygen is already set. Uh, engine uh, windshield. We probably don't need it yet. The probe I will put on. Probe heat. And we can see now our cast system. The only thing we need to worry about is that we have our parking brake set. That's quite okay. Now, another couple of things we need to do before we get going. Our nav source is from our FMS, which is your GPS, essentially. We can put in LOC stuff if we're following VOR and NDF or ADF and all that jazz. Um, now, what else? Speed bugs. So we're going to set these on. So these are our V speeds. I'm going to set these. So we can... Uh, 94 knots. That'll be enough to get us into the air. Uh, traffic map. Don't need to worry about that. I have wind information coming up here. That's absolutely grand. Uh, this screen will go MFD, and then this one will go radio. How's that for a plan? Right, we're laughing. So radio over on this side. So we have our squawk. We'll put in something fictitious. We'll go, I don't know, 6411. And we shall enter that. 
it's set to auto again there's a lot of automation with this aircraft which is really handy uh we have our audio for our radios so we have com one mic co-pilot we don't need to worry about them so that's our radio stuff that's all looking good uh what else do we need to do here now set our altitude i suppose so we'll go to our i don't need to worry about procedures flight plan we can go vnav let's have a look so we're going to say right cruise altitude 740 feet well no we're going to change all that now in a second so we're going to put in uh, an altitude here initial altitude we're going to go up to uh 7000 we're going to hone that in there now 7000 is set Cruise altitude is going to be 7,000 feet. Our climb profile, so it's going to say maximum rate, 165 knots. Yeah, that's fairly comfortable. We can slow it down if we wish, so we can change this. So maximum climb rate. Um, Let me see. We can do pilot defined, high speed or cruise. So we go pilot defined. I want to climb you, at 150 knots. Uh, That's your M or your max speed. I think we can just put that in. 3.7 or 0.37 right uh night Zeb, gifting a tier one sub to shy lucy meow thank you very very much indeed cyrus t says i have an unpublished livery for this plane somewhere oops really we need it we need it cyrus happy monday to you mate i hope you're well uh now come here did goblin zeus get in and night Zeb, is everyone now up and running lads are you able to fly this is Julius Caesar, and I've brought you this free vintage for Maritime Gaul on the backs of my captives for your pleasure. Hashtag Caesar on TV. Oh, sterling. Brilliant. Uh, now, transition altitude, uh, it'll be referenced on your chart. Altitude speed limit, 240 under 10,000. Again, we can edit all of this. Let's say 220. And what's important about these speeds, right? Um, a lot of the time it'll sync to the charts and the nav data, but especially for next week speed is so important you can't go too slow but what happens to a lot of folks they go too fast and next thing ah i'm in a hoop right so our climb is looking good cruise speed 250 that's fine our descent schedule so that's giving us quite a fast descent but i'm okay with that for the moment so this is eff effectively our vnav is set up our vnav is set up fms speed 145 knots i'm happy enough with that and we can see 145 is put in and we can now go uh, FMS on our auto throttle and we should be good should be good all right so any questions arm the flight directors and the rest then uh we'll see how we get on so it's going to be runway 19 for departure which is behind us so let me see where I am it's going to be taxi forward I can go the long way so all the way around to the right and let's see what happens right get me chair kind of set up parking brakes coming off and uh, we're going to apply a little bit of power and as we start to roll, we're just going to gently push on the toe brakes. Brakes are working all as well. We're going to go one notch of flaps. Double check all our flight controls are free, moving and correct, which they are. And we continue to taxi. If we don't have a taxi light, we can put on our landing light and that'll do us. So taxiing forward here, we're going to swing around to the right hand side, follow the taxiway down. Quick look around the aircraft. No one's in our way. We're looking good. And at this stage, I'm going to activate our multiplayer so we get to see all you guys and what you're flying to, uh, tonight as well. And um, how does it compare to a Skoda? <laughs> it's all right. Now, I am using DirectX yep. 12. We're going the wrong way. We're totally fine. We're just going the long way. Uh, so I am using DirectX 12, which I tend not to do. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, reset your Barrow, lads. Barrow is very close to standard, funny enough. It's 2 niner. Niner one inches of mercury and we can change that as well uh we can go here into pfd setting i think is it no yes no certainly so no uh is it pfd map settings Ooh, this is interesting how do we change this devil there's a way to change that we'll have a look here now in a moment uh beautiful look at that livery already look at that <laughs> firefly air one on the way. If, I just, if I just want to change the barrow from inches of mercury to uh, hectopascals, down arrow on the PFD settings. Uh, PFD map, down, ah, there we go. PFD settings, down arrow, wind, ah, barrow selection, inches, let's go hectopascals, perfect. So we start, we're probably one, yeah, yeah, one zero one three. 
So mainly in Europe, you're going to be flying with uh, Q and H, and they're measured in hectopascals. In the United States, you go by your altimeter barrow settings, and they're set to inches of mercury. But uh, we should be grand, lads. We should be grand. Thank you for the help on that. Um, some, uh, or Summers, thank you very much indeed. Look at that new livery, lads. What do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely stunning. Gibbo did an incredible job. Look at the cut of that thing. Not to mention, how good is that Phoenix? Like, we know it's been streamed to absolute bejesus, but I think it's incredible. Man alive, they've done such a great job updating that aircraft. Hello, 414. It's a beaut, isn't it? Laurie Walker, you're very welcome in. Hello, hello. Yeah, it's really, really nice, isn't it? All the vision jets we have here. We've got a citation. Looking good, looking good. So we're taxiing here along the way on Charlie. And uh, well, so far, so good. All our views are set up here. And uh, well, we can see what's happening here on our maps and what we're doing. So I have multiple maps open. It's probably overkill, but we're grand. We're grand. Now, we do have a traffic map open on this side. Uh, let me see now. Where is... There's our traffic map here, right? So if I go into traffic settings, and if I go to standby, and if I go to on... You should start seeing a whole load of other traffic populate in this area. We should see. Yeah, so that should populate in a moment. It's like, it's, it's ADSB. It's saying we're unrestricted at the moment, but that's fine. Uh, now, if I move this divil over, this is our map settings here. We'll zoom in a little bit, just so I know where we're going. The Alps are definitely the first challenge. We need to, we need to get over the Alps, right? And, uh... I gotta say, even though the, the weather is doing what it's doing, it's still pretty here, isn't it? Got some Rafales down there as well. Beautiful. Okay, so taxiing now on Delta, and then we're going to be turning right onto the active runway. We can see a whole load of aircraft down here already. QC Frank's in the Fiat. Damn it, Dale, it's a Fiat. Frank, I don't think I have that installed. You might appear as a Mooney. Model matching, lads. Model matching. That's how it works. <laughs> so if you'd like to come flying with us, we're live on the Southeast Asian server. And uh, don't worry if it's your first time doing a group flight or you are a seasoned veteran. Just jump on in. Just jump on in. Uh, yeah, but don't worry, Frank. You fly what you want, lad. You enjoy it. And the only reason I, I've uninstalled it because I was working on a something. Safe altitude, according to Little Nav Map, will be 15. Yeah, we will climb. 100%. We will climb. We're going we're gonna to go with 7,000 for our initial, and then we'll, uh, we can bump it up then after that. Okay, there's a huge queue. This is where ATC will come in fierce handy. Right, lads, when you're ready, on your bike. <laughs> and then I might just do the L switcheroo. Don't mind me, lads. I'm just uh, talking to J Jemima. You know, I'm up here now. We say nothing. Primo Victoria, you're very welcome in, man. Look at this. This is like the overtake maneuver. Have you no shame, Murphy? None at all. <laughs> Don't do mind me. It's like when you see those cretins. We're all stuck in the. Oh, someone had the same idea I had. Who's that devil? Um, it's like when you see a cretin going up the hard shoulder. Come back here with the rest of us. <laughs> no such luck. The amount of airplanes here, lads. This is class. All the jets, the business jets. Be Carlos in the longitude. Nice. All righty. Is there someone in an Embraer? Okay, all our lights are on. Our last little check here now. Transponder. It is set to auto, so we should be good to go, lads. We should be good to go. Uh, let me see now. We're going to go to our heading mode, and we're just going to sync that to runway heading, which is now uh, come, hi come hither. Heading is set. Put it into the gadget. Flight level change. 125 knots, that'll do. And then we can go VNAV and all that sort of jazz here now in a moment. Although, we'll arm VNAV. How's that? So VNAV is, is armed. Nav is armed. When we take off, we'll do a couple of circles around as we 
kind of belt up. I'll go at the uh, auto throttle now in a moment. So, if we're ready, it is time to depart. Flap set. Uh, trims, Murphy. Trims. Nearly forgot. That could have been embarrassing. Uh, let me see here now. Trim up. Up, you devil. Into the green, please. Six will do. Okay. Power coming in. Fade X stabilized. Toga. Don't mind the fact we've just literally flown into people. It's totally fine. Totally fine. So, speed live. There's 60. There's 80. 94. Yep, see Daisy. Traffic. Oh, Jay's that was fast. Six o'clock. Same altitude. We need to turn her off. Gear up. Traffic. Traffic. 12 o'clock. Same altitude. Shh, shh, Less than one mile. Yeah, it's fine. Traffic. Traffic. Six o'clock. Same altitude. Less than one mile. Traffic. Traffic. Shh. Six o'clock. Same altitude. Oh, wait, balls of two of them open. Less than one mile. Right, we're grand now. Totally fine now, lads. Nothing to worry about at all. All is well in the realm. Okay, flaps are in. Yeah, you'd need to have TCAS off for a crew flight. Okay, get ourselves turned around here. Watch your speed. Take it nice and easy here as we're just kind of cruising, cruising around. Man alive, look at the weather. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? That looks insanely good. Right, friends, what we're going to do, if you're currently flying along with us, if you're on the... Why is that button working? The button shagged. If you're on the Xbox, press 1. If you're on the PC, press 2. And if you're here for the sheer crack of it, because it's a Monday, well, you press number 3. Abnormal C, thank you very much. Hello, Fireflies. Welcome to the Flying Circus. We live stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 20 hundred Zulu time, right here. Alright, alright. Right. How are we looking here now as we get things back into persuasion? So we're gonna roll out and we're gonna go onto our magenta line and we're gonna activate our VNAV so we're already armed. Easy now. Get my trim set up here, lads. So let me see. Uh, on our autopilot settings, we're gonna say nav mode and VNAV. Heading is currently in. Armor nav. Uh, bring our heading back to here. Autopilot engage. And we're now going on to a VNAV profile, we hope. Let's keep a look on things here now. So, she's probably going to balance here for the moment. It is turning us on course. That we, that's what we want. And if we go to auto throttle. Now, we did say 125. But 150 is what she's looking for. Let's go manual. We're not speed down a smidgen. 
We're going to climb at 125. And let's go up to our first climb of 7,000 feet. Flight level change. In you go. Into the soup. Engine spooling up. Don't need traffic, but on weather. Oh, balls, wrong one. Map. Uh, let's go weather. Weather options. Connect. I don't think this works though, does it? Define coverage. Radar. Surface. Uh, what about weather radar? There we go. It's off. How do we turn it on? Radar on? There's a bearing line. Turn it on to weather. Scan can be horizontal. That's quite okay. And we have about 15 miles there just to see where we're going. So altitude is now coming up to 7,000. Speed is looking good. 145 is what it's going to hold us at. And we're well on our way. We haven't cleared the soup. So we're going to put in an additional climb now. We're going to set 15,000 or flight level uh, 150. All the way in we go. 150. Up you go, you devil. 150 set. Flight level change. Put that back in again. And bring our speed down as we climb. Hundred and thirty knots should be enough, and we're climbing through. We're just about to burst through the clouds here as well. Very, very nice. Not sure if the weather radar is working. Usually it does. We'll have a look here in a while. Uh, we got thirty on yourself. Uh, what it do? Hey, downrange. Good to see you, man. All is well in the realm. Welcome in. Twenty nine on the PC, which is now thirty, uh, and we got one on console. Hey, Black Eyes Gabe is here. Good to see you. Uh, Kozaki is on top of the clouds at 8,500 feet, climbing to flight level 150. Goblin Zoo, still no work? Or still not working? What's it looking for? Insert game disc. Just check for an update as well. Sometimes the uh, Microsoft identity thingy needs an update. So we're at 9,000 feet. We're just on top of the cloud layer. We're bursting through now. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Right, so our scenery is, um, well, <laughs> our scenery isn't going to be much from this altitude, but let's see what happens. We're going to be kind of rambling down over uh, Geneva, neck of the woods, and then we're over the Alps. So we'll keep an eye on it. Let's see what this weather is doing. Balut is here. Hello, Balut. Good to see you. Um, Zaiti says, I've just realized I've never flown the Citation. Ooh. Sorry, Murray. Good to see you. Have you got the auto thingy? I'm not actually using it. Only because I've switched over to DX12 and frames are pretty good. Uh, like I'm getting 80 in 4K with like everything fairly max, so I've no complaints. DX12 just wouldn't work for me for such a long time. Now it's working. So uh, I'm fairly happy with that. So we're climbing here at just 130 knots. Once we get up to a cruise altitude, we can kind of unleash the beast a little bit. And uh, Scott Briggs, good to see you. I used to fly the Vision Jet all over the place on X-Plane 11. Yes. Pelican still posing as a bonanza. Why is that? I'm 90% certain I have that now turned on, Adorn. We are surfing the clouds. Indeed we are. Friend of all, that's a good idea. You can try that. Resetting your time. But usually, if it happens out of the blue, it's 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 how Microsoft kind of works in its mysterious ways. In its mysterious ways. So let's uh, let's talk some Roman, shall we? So in part ten of our Gallic series, um, the Gallic War series, Alea Eacta Est, the die is cast. We reach the culmination of Caesar's monumental campaign. So after subduing Gaul, Caesar found himself entangled in Rome's complex political web. His victories had managed his status and magnified his status, but also intensified the envy and fear amongst his rivals. The Senate, manipulated by Pompey and Caesar's enemies, demanded his return to Rome as a private citizen, stripping him of his legions. Caesar faced a dire choice. Obey the Senate's orders, risking his legacy and his life to his enemies, or march on Rome, a direct challenge to the Republic's authority. 
Caesar reportedly said, Alea Iacta S, as he crossed the Rubicon River with his legion, one legion, the 13th. The boundary separating his province from Italy, the, uh, the Rubicon River, it's only about 50 miles long, and it gets its name, Ruby, this red colour, right? Uh, probably from the, the, the rock or whatever. But anyway, this act of defiance, it ignited a civil war that would end the Republic and pave way for the Imperial Era, with Caesar as its first de facto emperor, right? So, as we traverse this historical path, we're going to explore the strategic decisions, the battles and the alliances that define Caesar's return. And we move ahead to see what happened after the fact. So, returning to Rome. After his triumphant return to Rome following the Gallic Wars, Julius Caesar found the city and the Roman Republic in turmoil. His unauthorized crossing of the Rubicon River with a legion in 49 BC, famously declaring the Dias Castor, Elea Iacta Est, was an act of war that initiated a civil conflict against Pompey and the senatorial elite. Caesar embarked on a series of reforms intended to address the deep-rooted issues plaguing the Roman Republic. He restructured Rome's debt, relocated public roads and lands for his soldiers, and he inhibited or initiated the Julian calendar, aligning the Roman year with the solar cycle. It's pretty much fairly close at uh, the calendar we have. You know, it was updated a couple of hundred years later, but the calendar that Caesar has done, pretty good. Can we point out the Rubicon when we're over it? Speed is set to 130. Oh, Jesus, we need to fix that. Let's go to FMS here. Boop. 250, up the yard. Thanks, lads. Thanks, lads. Uh, however, Caesar's reforms, while improving the state's stability, will it also stoke the fear among the senatorial class that he had sought to dismantle the Republic's foundations in pursuit of absolute power. So Caesar gets back, and remember, Pompey and Crassus. But poor old Crassus, he's no longer. He, he died out in Syria. Pompey, uh, you know, Gnaeus Pompey Magnus, or Pompey the Great, he was the co-consul of Rome. And when Caesar's daughter Julia died, she was married to Pompey, and that's where the bond between the two men was. Uh, well, she died, and, uh, well, you know, that broke the bond. So Pompey started getting kind of suspicious and a little bit kind of, you know, worried that Caesar was trying to one-up him. You have to remember, everyone in Rome at the time, Caesar was this larger-than-life character. I mean, he was, he was some sort of a hero, a mythical hero even. He conquered Gaul, he went to the ends of the earth, he went to Britain, right? So Pompey kind of felt, you know, threatened by all of this. Plus he had the Senate in his ear, mainly Cato the Younger. Cato was a devil. He hated Caesar. He was a, a Republican true and true. And he didn't like Caesar. He knew exactly what Caesar's makeup was. This guy wanted power. He wanted the legacy. He wanted all of these things. So that kind of created the entire setup. When Caesar crossed the Rubicon with his 13th Legion, uh, that was a sign enough to the Romans back in Rome, uh, in particular to Pompey and the Senate, Caesar means business. The problem was speed. Pompey could not raise his legions quick enough because most of them were based out in Spain. He couldn't raise them quick enough to get Hello back there. and defend Rome. That created a massive problem. So Pompey instructed a tactical retreat, leaving the city, and he took the vast majority of the Senate with him, which was absolutely nuts, right? Uh, Paul, thank you very much indeed for the follow. You're very welcome in. So Pompey left the city, and when Caesar arrived in, from a political standpoint, the city was empty. There was no law, there was no order, and what do you do? Caesar set up camp. He started making all these improvements. He put people to work. He kind of sorted out all the debt. He, he made the place kind of safe and grand. But it didn't get rid of the problem. Caesar left his general in charge while he went off in pursuit of Pompey. Caesar's idea wasn't to go out and annihilate him. Caesar wanted to have a sit down because he, he thought, if I could just sit down with Pompey, I could absolutely work this out 
and the two of us can return to Rome and, you know, rule it as we did with the triumvirate, right? Uh, so Caesar left General Marcus Antonius, Mark Anthony, in charge. Now, Mark Anthony was a devil, a phenomenal general, but he was a devil. He used to go mad on the drink and running around the place having the crack. He was a loose cannon, to say the least. But Caesar then started to pursue Pompey. In doing so, Pompey in, uh, immediately went over to uh, Magna Graecia, out to Greece. That's where he headed for. And Caesar wanted to follow him across. Now, Pompey knew there was no way Caesar would follow him across the Adriatic because, well, Pompey could control there with all his warships and everything else. But again, it all came to the speed. And you have to, you know, you have to think, Caesar's soldiers, his legions, these are 10 years battle-hardened. They've seen everything. You can't compare these to the normal Roman legions or even Pompey's legions. There was a stark difference. You were looking literally at a professional standing army versus, you know, like a territorial or a reserve army. Very, very different. You had the full-timers against the part-timers. Caesar had the upper edge when it came to movement. Didn't necessarily have them when it came to numbers, but definitely in terms of movement. Plus, if we were to pin Pompey to Caesar in terms of military capability um, and management, being generals, Pompey has been out of the game for some 10 years. He's been in Rome, living the political life. That's where his life has been for the last 10 years. Meanwhile, Caesar is actually out there on the battlefield. So, even though Pompey might have had 10 years of the easy life, he's still a formidable force, but nowhere near the same complexity now that Caesar has. Caesar is in his absolute prime. He's 10 years at this, constant warmongering, fighting, battles, all this sort of jazz. Pompey, he's been kind of putting a bit of a beer belly, you know, chilling out, having the crack. And that's where he's at, right? Oh, look at this formation behind us. Now, where are we at? Uh, Cato was an idiot. <laughs> Muse fan and Hemingbird. You are brilliant. Problem solved. Disconnect. Connected with my password. Game pass account. Brilliant Goblin Zeus. Brilliant. So Caesar's political ambitions, of course, led him to Greece in pursuit of Pompey. Uh, and his, his one-time friend and ally, and of course in the first triumvirate, now turned adversary. The rivalry culminated in the decisive battle at Pharsalus in 48 BC. Despite being significantly outnumbered, Caesar's tactical genius and loyalty of his legions secured him a resounding victory. Pompey, in a desperate bid for survival, fled to Egypt, hoping for sanctuary. So Pompey was defeated, and Pompey and the Senate, they were absolutely certain they were going to win. We were going to win. We outnumber Caesar. He's a fool. And, you know, once these lads come up against real Roman legions, they're not going to have a chance. It didn't work out that way. In actual fact, it was said that Pompey had to disguise himself as an ordinary citizen in fear that the Romans would identify him, Caesar's Romans would identify them, and then off they go. What's interesting as well, this is a civil war, so you had... Soldiers trained the same, following the same doctrine. They're even in the same uniforms. So they deployed the earliest days of passwords. We've seen it, anyone, you know, World War II stuff, you've often heard of thunder, flash, right? These are challenge words or passwords. They were used for troops to identify friend or foe. We see it in aircraft, modern aircraft, you have identification friend or foe. It follows the same idea, except this is done digitally and it's done on transponders and beacons and all this. In the Second World War, the Allies would use thunder flash. And the reason why, the German pronunciation of thunder tended to be thunder and flash was flosh. Thunder flosh. Ah! Bu -bu -bu. Right, so the, anyway, Caesar uh, and Pompey, well, they used their own passwords or these challenge uh, words, right? Uh, Pompey went with uh, Hercules. I'm almost certain it was Hercules. Uh, while Caesar, hang on now, I need to write this down. Or I had it here. Did I write it down? Hang on, I need to find this. Jesus, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Caesar and Pompey passwords. Civil War. I don't want to say the wrong thing and then everyone turns around and says, Murph, you're, 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 you're all wrong. Wait now, wait now. 
Do, 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 do. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Maybe someone in the chat knows. Where's this now? Password. It was Hercules. I don't want to say it was um Venus. I, I'm almost certain it's Venus. I think it was Venus. Let's go with Venus because I'm not going to find that. Anyway, let's go with Venus. But they were the passwords that were used. And it became quite difficult because a lot of these men were known to each other. Even though they're on different sides, you know, some are loyal to Pompey, some are loyal to Caesar. They, they, a lot of guys knew each other. And, uh, well, on Pompey's side, he saw a lot of troops moving over to Caesar because, well, these guys, you look at the last 10 years, they're victorious, they're well paid now. You know, they're, they've all these things going for them. There's legacy behind them. Pompey seems to be just running away. Then you have your staunch Republicans. You know, they, they see Caesar as a tyrant. They're not going to let this guy take over. So it's a very kind of a complex situation for both to be in. What about Pompey, though? Let's focus on him for a minute, right? So Pompey was, of course, one of Rome's most celebrated military leaders, enjoying, enjoying a career filled with significant victories. It was Pompey who actually got most of the credit for, um, you know, getting rid of the whole Spartacus uprising. Even though it was Crassus, Pompey just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And more importantly, he got his word back to the Senate House first that it was Pompey who managed to quell the revolt, right? But it's not to take away anything from, uh, from Pompey. He did greatness. He did greatness. So his fortune changed dramatically following his alliance uh, and subsequent fallout with Ju Julius Caesar. After the breakdown of the first triumvirate, which also included Crassus, Pompey aligned himself with the Senate against Caesar. The civil war between Caesar and the Senate, where Pompey was the leading military figure for the senatorial side, culminated in the Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC. Despite being one of the most capable generals of his time, Pompey was decisively defeated by Caesar's forces. He fled to Egypt, hoping to find refuge with the young pharaoh Ptolemy XIII. Now, let's pause on that for the moment. So the name Ptolemy, go back a couple of hundred years. So Ptolemy was a great general and advisor to Alexander the Great. Uh, that's all our Greek history, which is starting next week. Ah, <laughs> it's not. Um, but anyway, Ptolemy, um, after Alexander the Great passed away, Ptolemy kind of made himself this sort of an emperor, pharaoh thingy in Egypt. After the empire fell, you know, the, the Greek empire, the Macedon empire, uh, well, the key figures took over the key locations. They divided up the empire and they ruled from there. So Ptolemy, for hundreds of years, looked after Egypt. King Ptolemy, or Pharaoh Ptolemy the 13th, ascended the throne when he was very, very young, at the age of 10. When he came to power, he had all his scheming and political mastery done by a dude, I forget his name, but he was in control of him. And then all his like military stuff, well, that was another advisor, but they effectively were using Ptolemy as some sort of a puppet. He was a child. He had no way of knowing. He had no way of knowing, right? So, seeking to win, uh, or sorry, uh, seeking to win favour with Caesar, Ptolemy had Pompey assassinated upon his arrival in 48 BC. So, Pompey headed over to Egypt. Ptolemy, he knows what's going on. He sees this Caesar fella running amok. He's trying to get favour. So when, to when Pompey gets off his little boat to come ashore, which is welcomed by the dignitaries, he's killed there and then. Meanwhile, his family and, you know, senators on the ship are looking on at the bay in absolute, what is this? They've just, he's been killed. Pompey has been killed on the beaches uh, as he's arriving into Egypt. Uh, Ptolemy, of course, thinking this is a great idea. I'll win favour with Julius Caesar. So they cut off Pompey's head, embalmed it, and they sent it to Caesar as a gift. Ooh. Julius Caesar, he was only 
couple of days after Pompey arriving in Egypt. And Caesar had troops with him, in which Pompey didn't. But then Caesar, after being greeted by the emissaries of Ptolemy's uh, guard, was presented Pompey's head in a basket. He broke down. This was no way for a great Roman general to end up. Caesar was absolutely disgusted by this. But he couldn't rock the boat. He understood why Ptolemy did what he did. He was trying to win favour. And Ptolemy offered his house, or his palace, as uh, somewhere to stay for Caesar. Caesar couldn't be seen to be uh, not accepting this gratuitous offer. He had to play along with it. But there were other things happening in Egypt at the time. Egypt was in the same sort of turmoil because there was a civil war brewing there also. King Ptolemy XIII had a sister. In actual fact, technically, they were married. She was a little bit older than him. She was aged 20. But she was shunned from the whole, you know, you're not in charge, get out, get out, to try to disappear her because she would create problems. And the idea was they would co-rule. However, this wasn't the case. She was pushed out to one side. Well, she decided when Caesar was there, she said, oh, here's a good opportunity. So she got herself disguised, carried into the palace. Some say she was rolled up in a carpet. Others say she was put in like a basket of linen. Straight into Caesar's quarters where he was staying. She revealed herself to him. And it was none other than Cleopatra. The sister of Ptolemy the Thirteenth, Cleopatra was the queen of Egypt, but she wasn't in power because, as I said, Ptolemy had these other two advisors kind of running the show. Caesar was absolutely spitten by her. He's Jesus. She's only gorgeous. He said, you know, in a Latin accent, right? But she was intelligent. She was good looking, and she was full of ambition. But she was able to communicate. She was able to talk to Caesar. Now Caesar, at this stage, he's more than twice her age. So, like, she's a stunner. What? She, and she a queen as well. So, a relationship kind of formed. They got on really, really well. And Caesar knew, right, there's a way here that we can kind of get all of this to work. Never cross Caesar. So, anyway. Um, Julius Caesar's entry into Egypt in 48 BC set the stage for one of history's most famous alliances... Upon his arrival, Caesar became embroiled in the complex political strife of Egypt where Cleopatra, the Detroit queen... They've done studies, Sixty you percent know, of the time, it works. Every time. Every time. Uh, the dethroned queen was vying for power against her brother and co-ruler, or co-ruler, Pharaoh Ptolemy. Cleopatra, seeking to regain her throne, saw in Caesar a powerful ally and presented herself to him in a legendary encounter reportedly smuggled into his presence, wrapped in a carpet. This marked the beginning of their intertwined political and personal relationship. With Caesar's military support, Cleopatra was able to overcome her brother's forces, solidifying her rule over Egypt. This alliance was not only political, but also deeply personal, as evidenced by the birth of their son. Ptolemy Philopater Philometer Caesar he was known as Caesarian, meaning Little Caesar. The union was significant for Cleopatra, linking her dynasty more closely with Rome's power, and for Caesar, it offered a loyal ally in a strategically crucial region. Egypt was so important for Rome back in the day. It was so important. The grain came from Egypt, the food. The Nile was like the mother of all, you know, Fields of fertility in terms of growing crops, fertile land, that's the one, fertility. Uh, and it was good to have Egypt on their side, right? Fairly small mountain ahead of us. Yeah, it is tiny. Yeah, it's only a small little hill up. <laughs> Jesus, will we clear it? Ah, we will, I say. Anyone name the mountain? I'll give you a hint. It starts with, it's massive. Yeah. Right? We're going the wrong way. No, we're going good. We're going good. We're about to cross the Alps. Look how good this is. Beautiful scenery here in the sim. Flight plan is perfect for at 15,000 feet. <laughs> um, well, I think we'll make it. Yeah, I think we're going to make it, lads. I got a good feeling about this. 
If, if, if we'll have to wait and see, right? We'll have to wait and see. It's weird to think. Dreamy, that, sleepy, nighty, snoozy, snooze. It's weird to think that uh, Cleopatra is closer to us than the time when the pyramids were built. Absolutely. Cleopatra is closer to our timeline than she was with the ancient Egyptians. It's mad, right? Mad. Oh, this is going to be close. Anyway. Hello there. We move on. Uh, who's this? SpaceX's life. Thank you very much indeed for the follow. Welcome in, man. Ooh. Now, I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, I reckon we're okay. I mean, there's nothing really here to worry about us, is there? I mean... When we look at it. One man. In a world. With a big mountain. Will we get over the hump? Oh Jesus, it's growing as we're looking at it. Will the jet pass? Oh, this is going to be close. Oh, it's going to be close. What you reckon? What you reckon? Ah, what's... Oh, Jesus. Will he even clip the wing a bit? <laughs> Who planned this route? Brilliant. Jesus, we only... Now, lads, be careful. Don't, yeah, baby. Yeah. Don't bash into that. Th Jesus, look. The flight plan brought us to like 20 feet of it. Right? Brilliant. That could have been hilarious. Big Sierra, famous last words. Right? <laughs> oh, dear. That's great news. We passed it. That's fantastic. Fantastic news. Who doubted us? Missed it by that much. Uh... Right? So that's the story now. We have Caesar after getting rid of Ptolemy. Cleopatra is now in power, which is brilliant. Ptolemy, well, he he faced a, an unterrible end. And uh, his advisors, of course, were hunted down and they had their revenge served to them. Uh, of course, Caesar. It was said that Caesar wept at the funeral of Pompey. See, Caesar was good friends with Pompey. He idolised him many, many years before all of this. So uh, Caesar was deeply upset at the death of Pompey. But it is what it is. So what, about, so what about Cato, the devil, and the rest of the Senate? These lads who were causing all sorts of messing, right? Those wingmen are just brilliant. Aren't they incredible, Dougal? They're incredible. Absolutely brilliant. When are we getting the Murph version of Jeremy Clarkson? <laughs> That'd be dangerous. Because then they'd be like, Murphy said this the other night. What? Oh, he didn't. Yeah, we heard you. But anyway, Cato, right? He was a staunch defender of the Roman Republic and a principal opponent of Julius Caesar's policies and his ambitions. Known for his rigid moral integrity and stoicism, Cato vehemently opposed Caesar's rise to power, playing a leading role in a senatorial resistance against him. Following Caesar's victory in the Civil War and Pompey's subsequent debt, Cato refused to concede to what he saw as tyranny. Instead of surrendering to Caesar, Cato committed suicides in Utica, present-day Tunisia, in 46 BC, choosing death over living under Caesar's rule. His suicide was seen as an act of ultimate defiance against Caesar's domination and a symbol of the Republic's fall. So that got rid of... Um, like a rid of Cato, the parallel double. Do you know? Anyway, Caesar's prolonged stay in Egypt and his evident relationship with Cleopatra will have raised some suspicions and discontent in Rome. Rome, already wary of Caesar's increasing power and reformative actions, viewed his alliance with a foreign queen and the acknowledgement of his son uh, with her as steps toward establishing a monarchy, a form of rule that the Roman Republic had long hated since the expulsion of the Etruscan kings. Rome used to have kings, you see. It goes all the way back to the time of Romulus at the founding of Rome. Critics and political opponents framed Caesar's actions as those of a ruler who sought to elevate himself above the traditions and limits of the republican governance, potentially aspiring to be a king himself. This period in Egypt was bolstering Caesar's position in the East and ensuring Egypt's role as a vital ally of Rome added fuel to the fire of political opposition against him back at home. The alliance with Cleopatra, despite its benefits, became a, po became a point of contention used by Caesar's enemies to question his loyalty to the Roman Republic, their ideals, 
and it stoked fear of his potential kinship. This would contribute to the growing tensions that eventually led to the end of Julius Caesar. His actions continuously blurred in the, or blurring the lines between personal ambition, political strategy, and the bounds of the Republic authority. So, spoiler alert, we all know, well, uh, Caesar's dead, we know that, right? But how, how did it all happen? Now, we need to keep an eye on our map here, because we're going to be landing here in a couple of moments for our first stop. So, upon his return to Rome, Caesar orchestrated a series of four magnific magnificent triumphs, or triumphs to commemorate his military success particularly those in Gaul, Egypt, Pontus, and Africa. These celebrations were not only a display of Rome's dominance over its enemies, but also a testament to Caesar's unparalleled leadership and military acumen. Central to the Gallic triumph was the figure of Vercingetorix. Remember our friend Vercingetorix. While the chieftain who had united the Gauls against Rome, but was ultimately defeated, he was displayed as a prize captive. He was paraded naked through the streets of Rome, and a subsequent execution, well, death by unceremonious, or unceremonious strangulation. They kept Vercingetorix alive for six years. Until these triumphs, then they, you know, pulled him out of the cell. First time he saw daylight in six years. And then they killed him. Crazy. However, the grandeur of Caesar's triumphs and his increasing accumulation of power will have led to a lot of unease with the Roman populace. This unease reached a critical point during the Lupercalia festival, a traditional Roman celebration. During these festivities, Caesar was publicly offered a royal diadem, symbolizing kinship or kingship by no other than Mark Anthony. Caesar refused this as a gesture was fraught with implications of monarchy, a system of governance of the Roman Republic. The crowd didn't really know what to do. So when Mark Anthony kind of put the crown over him, the crowd gasped. There was silence. When Caesar pushed it away, they laughed and they cheered. Anthony did this a second time. There was no response from the crowd whatsoever. Even when Caesar pushed it away, they could read what was happening. This created a problem. The incident at the Lupercalia festival, whether staged or spontaneous, significantly impacted Caesar's public image. To many Romans, the mere suggestion of accepting a crown, regardless of Caesar's refusal, was indicative of his aspirations to absolute power and an intent to overthrow the Republic's principles. This act, coupled with the accumulation of titles and honours that positioned him above the traditional Republican norm, deepened the divide between Caesar and the senatorial class. The fear of monarchy's return became a rallying cry from his uh, detractors and contributed to the growing conspiracy against him. The tension between Caesar's undeniable contribution to Rome's expansion and the perceived threat he possessed or he posed to the Republic's values set the dramatic events leading up to his assassination. Next up we go to what is called the Ides of March. You ever hear that? You ever hear that saying, the Ides of March? We're going to be covering that one next. So then we will cover the Ides of March, the aftermath, then we're going to have the rise of the empire, and then have a quick summary of, you know, pretty much the empire up until now, right? So we're, we're so close. We're so close to the end of this whole saga. I hope now you remembered what we went through in lesson one. I'm going to be asking questions, do you know? Jesus, we need to descend rapidly. Right plane, let's be having you. Altitude, bring her down there now, Janie. Let's go 2,000 feet a minute. Mind your ears, they're going to pop like an absolute mad lad. And uh, let us bring the altitude down. Yes. All the way down. Speed is dropping as well. We're descending here at 2,000 feet per minute. We can increase that to 2,500. There we go. Down we go. And we're going to be doing our first landing of this evening. We are one, two, we're a third of the way there. How are we going for time? We're doing okay. Wow, look at the weather here. Look at the snow from the Alps and then it branches out just to, that's cool looking, isn't it? Isn't that gorgeous, lads? Stunning! Uh, Keen Lafford is here. Good to see you, Keen. I don't want to know. I joined literally the first thing I hear was he was paraded naked through the streets of Rome. Right. 
Uh, yeah, bloody Romans, indeed. Uh, is he even reading the chat? Of course he am, Samuel. Cato, uh, where will he spring from next? He's, not, he's just one of those devils, isn't he? Uh, dangerous time to be alive. Indeed it was. Indeed it was. It's like the whole, you know, the, the, the facts from kind of this whole point when they're moving from Republic to Empire, like, as I said, it's absolutely incredible. It's incredible. Right, we need to uh, double check our runway here for landing, yeah? So, uh, let me see. Runway still 3-6. So, we're going to go for a 3-6. So, we're going to overfly on the far side and then do a right base. That's kind of how she's going to look, lads. That's how she look. But, yeah. Samuel Timney. Yeah, if I, I, if I ever, like, if you say something and I don't, if I don't see it, just shout, right? So, we're about to ramble into... Um, Turin. The ICAO code is Lima India Mike Foxtrot. This is our first stop of the night, and we have two more stops to do after. But if you ever like if you ever post a message and I haven't copped it, just throw it in there again. I'm usually alright. The Romans also conquered or almost conquered Britannia, but the Celts weren't having it. Well We'll get to that. So, you know, during Caesar's time, they didn't. They they you know they 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 barely made an impact. But later on, Britain fell under Roman dominance for quite some time. But there was a boundary to it. That's where we have Hadrian's Wall. And then there was a second wall built some years later. And that kind of marked the, the edge of the world, so to speak. And it's like when you hear all these stories, right? The history. Rome had seven hills, seven kings, seven. One ring to rule them all. Jazz. You can see where, like, you know, a lot of... Um, a lot of movies and books draw their inspiration. Uh, you know, Game of Thrones, for example. Well, you look at the Roman Empire and the Romans. I mean, they're very close to the Lannisters. You know, and um, the wall represents Hadrian's Wall. The King of the North. It's mad when you think about it, isn't it? So 3-6 is what it's given me in terms of the wind. Which is down there. Look at the look at the formation flying. Isn't it incredible? Seven Samurai, Magnificent Seven. Flights with Joel. How are you, man? You're very welcome in. You're very welcome in. Hope you're keeping well. Okay, how are we doing? Speed is looking good. Altitude is looking good. Man, look at the scenery here. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? And we're like on live weather as well, look. This is insanely good. Anyone want to know my time settings? It's now 16.09 local time. 16.09. Seven Hills of Lisbon. There you go. I heard Caesar suppressed the Druids, but you kind of keep a good Druid down. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a turn onto base here now. Okay, start a turn. Speed is okay. 185 knots. Again, the vision jet, it's 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 comfortable at low speed, so we can really get the speed down if we wish. Sorry, Murray says, Curious Murph, how many of the IFR ATC on Xbox and compared to PC? Um well I'm waiting for the full registrations. Registration is now open. Um so anyone who's interested in doing the course, you gotta sign up for it and let us know if you're on PC or Xbox. There is a question there for it. And uh one lucky winner by registering for the course. One lucky winner is going to win a 12-month Navigraph subscription. And keep your eyes on Navigraph social media over the coming days, lads. Some exciting news there. With this big Egypt. Do you know? I'm on PC. Where do I go? What do you mean, Sai? Okay, speed is a little bit fast. So let's see if we can kind of slow our approach here a bit. We've no speed brakes on the aircraft. Where do I go to register? You go on to um, tutormurphy.com forward slash IFR and you can register in there. You'll see where it says course registration. I'll go through it with you here now in a sec, right? Let's get landed first and then I'll go through it with you. Now guys, you can still register for the course. Um, we're going to allocate slot times. Basically, 
block off slot times. These are the times in which we expect you to be pushing back from the from the stand, right? But if we allocate you a slot time and it doesn't work, or maybe you're not going to plan on flying, but you still want to register for the course, um, just send me a DM. But I highly recommend just sign up for the course. We have our own network. We don't need to worry about VATSIM. It works on PC and Xbox. And the idea is it'll build you up uh, to be able to go onto VATSIM. All right? So our speed here is a little bit lively, but we're okay. Easy. Dreamy, sleepy, nighty, snoozy, snooze. That was quite terrifying. Thank you, Hemingbird. <laughs> okay, runway 36. Easy, does it, Jemima? What's the roll of the runway? Okay, bleed the speed, hold the nose. Jesus, she's trying to float. 262, we'll take it. Look at it on the rough side, but we're grand. Thank you, Muse fan. Okay, bring the flaps in. Welcome to our first stop of the night, lads. Can I get a refund? No, there's no refunds. Alrighty. Gary says off the runway. We'll just go on the grass. Well, we don't even need to go on the grass. Plenty of room here beside us. Nice. Okay, so this is our first stop, guys. Um, this plane always wants to float. Yeah, yeah, it's a real challenge getting it down, isn't it? It's because there's no speed brakes. If you had speed brakes, you could really plant it. Vacuum, nicely done. Adorning, nicely done. Truck and con, good to see you. All right, I'm just going to back taxi here, right? There's Paul. Well done, Paul. Abnormal C, welcome in. Okay, so our next flight is going to take us from Torino all the way down to Florence. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be gorgeous. And like four o'clock in the afternoon, that sun is going to be getting lower and lower and lower. And we should have a nighttime arrival into um into rome i've discovered that the 40 series doesn't stop the stutters muse did you clear your uh shitter cache that'll get rid of them stutter be gone i want one of those floating planes yeah 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 okay we're gonna stop here for a moment Park and break comes on. Right, I'm going to show you two things quickly. First up is the website, twotonemurphy.com. Show you how to register, right? So this is a website. This is twotonemurphy.com. You have the Learn ATC series. Just go in there to the IFR ATC series, and it should load up for you. It'll probably ask you to register with the site. If you haven't already, just register with the site, okay? Uh, and then you'll see all this. You'll, you'll see what you need to see. So you're going to have the introduction. That brings you to the page with all the information that you need. Right? Including uh, this poster. Do be sure to try and, like, put that everywhere if you can. Right? Um, if you go back here, go to course registration. And when you click on this, it's going to say, enter your Discord name, enter your gamer tag, and what platform you're flying on. Either PC or Xbox. And once you register, then... We, you know, you should be able to keep an eye on the registration details. These are all the people who have registered so far. So see the way you have your target off block time and then also a, a call sign. So we're going to assign call sign. We'll, we'll look after all of this for you guys soon, right? Um, But once you get yourself up and running, make sure your Discord handle is there, your gamer tag is there, and what platform. So far, we only have pilots from PC with us. But we are expecting some Xbox guys as well. All right. So check back here regularly. Don't worry. I'll put out like alerts and notes whenever when we update it. So you're going to see a call sign. That's your call sign. 
uh, and then you'll see like a target off block time. Now your call sign isn't going to be, you know, Murph or Gibbo. It's going to be, we'll issue you with a, with a call sign. So it could be, you know, Firefly or Firefly 123 or Firefly 555, something like that. But that's going to be your ATC call sign. All right. Because in the real world, uh, especially on the commercial side, you don't get to choose it. It's chosen for you because this is the route you're flying and that's how it's associated and all that sort of stuff. But we need to issue you with a call sign only because just for the training. That's all, right? So when you're not doing the course and you're not doing the training, you belt away with any old call sign you want. When it comes to this course, we need to issue you with a call sign. All right? Cool. That's what that does. Right. It is time to carry on. Uh, do you know how to get rid of the uh, the shader cache? There's, there's two ways to get rid of it. I'll show you this briefly here as well. Hit the brakes. Right, to get rid of your shader cache, if you have NVIDIA, couldn't tell you about N, uh, AMD. What you need to do, you need to open up your NVIDIA control panel. Just have a listen here now. The first thing you do, you open your NVIDIA control panel. Go to global settings under manage 3D settings. Ramble down until it has your shader cache size. You need to change that from unlimited to disabled. Once it's disabled, you hit save, restart your computer. Okay, that's the first step. Shader cache, disable, restart your PC. When you turn back on your PC, um, you need to go into here. Local disk, users, your username, application data or app data two things first we go to local scroll down until you find nvidia gl cache and get rid of these guys in here you can delete these folders inside the gl cache get rid of them folders that's the first bit the second bit go back uh, into your app data folder and go to local open nvidia per driver version dx cache and delete all those files and they're all deleted, go back into your managed 3D settings in your NVIDIA control panel and put your shader cache size back to unlimited. That'll get rid of your stutters. For the most part. That'll, that'll do the trick for you right there. What? Right, time to fly. There's Kozaki in a Corsair look. Beautiful. Tactical note says Rambog, the assigned call sign is due to how stuff works uh, on the back end for the controllers. Yes. We just need you to have, like, it's it's just, it'll be grand. Famous last words, but it'll be grand. Right. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, we're heading over to Florence. Get ourselves spun round. We're going to set five and a half thousand feet. David Donald says, app data is hidden folder, not everyone will see it. You can go into your view settings and, and grab it there. Just just watch back this with a video. I have a video done on how to kind of tidy all that up. They've just changed the location of where the um, shader files are at. You know what I mean? If you're on AMD, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you, Iron Knob. Okay, so we're good to go. Uh, come back here now. Map, yes. Heading set. One notch of flaps. Let's go flying. Never change me trim because I'm an idiot. Maybe alright. Fixing the trim mid rollage. Yeah, week 10, nuts, isn't it? 95, oopsie daisy. Positive rate of climb, you're up. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Flaps in. 
Ease it out. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the latest AMD drivers have done a lot to stop stutters. Nice. Okay, we're climbing like a rocket ship here, lads. This is awesome. Check out the scenery, though. Isn't this gorgeous? This is stunning, lads. Right, is this button working? No, that button's proper gone. Right, lads, we're doing another count. So, if you're on the Xbox, press 1. PC Pilots, press 2. And if you're still here because it's Monday, well, you press number 3 as we continue on our adventure. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so, where were we? We're over here. Turn this down a smidgen. Uh, right, where are you trying to bring me playing? You're on roll mode, so we'll go heading mode uh, as we complete our second lap. Uh, stick her into heading. Roll is right. And our FMS is already armed. Speed is looking healthy, about 250. Auto throttle it. Keep her at 250. We want five and a half thousand feet. Flight level change, please. Here we go. Got ourselves turned around. 23 in the PC, one in VR, one in console. 135 passengers plus a Murph and 63 days to the Eurovision. Thank you, Keen. Much song releaseage this weekend for the Eurovision. Excellent choice. Italian Yang fan, good to see you, man. So if I, if I haven't said hello to someone tonight, do be sure to say hello. Because, you know, it's important I say hello. Uh, you, you take the trouble of showing up. I can, at the very least, I can do is say hello. Balbro, late ramblage in for a little lurk. Just finished workage for today. How's the Romans doing? Since we last spoke to you. Pompey, dead. Cato, dead. Crassus, you know, dead. Uh, but yes. For Caesar at the moment, everything's going tickety-boo. Right, more heading. Let's plan an intercept. Roughly five degrees. Something like that will do us. So speed at 250. Yeah, it's pretty okay. It's 174 nautical miles. We could probably go a little bit faster than 250. Hey, Gassius Maximus, good to see you. All right, lads, let's go a little bit faster here because uh, 250 is like, <gasps> you know. Something on the way. So... Thing. Let's go manual mode. Let's bring that speed up. Should we be able to crank 270? Italy looks so good in the sim. One of my favorite places. It's absolutely insane, is Italy. It's gorgeous. Anywhere in Italy in the sim is just beautiful. Italy and Australia, I think, are the best places to go fly. All the States as well. But, like, in, in Europe, it's Italy. And, um, you know, Australia and New Zealand. Stunning. 
Hayden, good to see you. Welcome in. Cyrus T redeemed something on the wing. Brilliant. Airlock talk. Mother of Jesus. It's great to see you, man. I was only thinking of you the other day. Is this where Roman reigns? Or is it or is the rock back in charge? Oh, and how the H E double hockey stick are you all? Airlock Doc, it is great to see you, mate. I hope you're keeping well. We haven't been the same without you. Uh so QC Frank's um Caesar started to suffer from seizures after he came back from Egypt because of raw pork. So it was said that he had an affliction. It could have been epilepsy. Uh, it could have been something else. Seemingly, this was witnessed before he went to Gaul. But yeah, it's, he, he definitely had a something. AV8, good to see you. He says, Murph, I loved learning about the Romans. I hope you do more of this type of content in the future. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Laserjet, good to see you. Welcome in, everybody. So we're on an intercept, we're waiting for the FMS to go onto our magenta line. And are we, any ETAs? 34 minutes? Okay, we need to keep this fairly lively. Now the, the last leg is, is nowhere near as far as this, so. About 34 minutes down to our next leg. Our 266 on our speed, we can probably bring it up here a little bit. Come on, Betsy, you can do it. Hello there. We're like 79% power. Uh, Grim Games Live, you're very welcome in. Thank you for the follow. Don't encourage him to talk about the Romans. Uh, I'm quite happy uh, to be able to catch you all. It's great to see you, man. It's great to see you. So where were you thinking about me, Murph? You dirty bird. I, oh, I was... Um... Murph... What's your speed switch speed? Huh? What's your speed switch speed set for the dash widget? What's my speed set for the dash widget? Can you be more specific? Two fifty plus five hundred knots. Uh. Is it in here? Oh, toggle speed. Yeah, yeah. That's a great widget, that. Brilliant. Okay, let's have a quick look here. So, 33 minutes. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Uh, ah, thank you very much indeed. Grim, Grim Games Live has just raided the channel. Thank you very, very much indeed, my guy. Hope you guys had a great stream. You're very welcome in. We're here in Microsoft Flight Sim. We're flying the Vision Jet by Flight FX. And uh, we've just taken off from Torino. We're heading down to Florence. And we're following on... Uh, this is our last installment uh, of the Gallic Wars series. We're following Julius Caesar over the last 10 weeks. Vision Jet is great, isn't it? Graham, it's great to see you, man. Is Norcalius here? Good to see you. 33 and a third minutes. Yes. See what you did there, Hemingbird. You made me do it. 33 and a third I just say it normally, 33 and a third, and everyone's just like, 33 and a third. Oh. For the record, I'm still on the other team. Team Gibbo, that. eh? Thanks, Airlock. <laughs> uh, Tommy, thank you very much indeed for the follow. You're very welcome in. This is tight. This is tight. It's beautiful. We're flying over Italy. We're on the Southeast Asian server. If you guys would like to come join us for the flight, it's very pretty. We're on live weather. Granted, we're not on live time because it's night time in Italy. 16.30 local. Look at that scenery down there. Look at that. Excuse me. And we have a great formation flight along the way. Really, really nice. So, uh, where were we? Yes. The Ides of March. Right? So, we've, we've been following on this uh, for some time. Caesar, you know, from his upbringing to getting into politics to, you know, his military might, the Gallic Wars, he's now back. There was a civil war with Pompey. Caesar spent time in Italy. He meets up with Cleopatra. And now he's back in Rome doing his thing. 
But the Romans and mainly the Senate, they're not liking this at all. So the Ides of March. The zenith of Julius Caesar's political career and a subsequent fall were dramatically marked by his assassination on the Ides of March, 44 BC. A faction of senators, disillusioned with Caesar's consolidation of power and fearing the erosion of the Republic's foundational freedoms, orchestrated his murder. Among the conspirators were notable figures such as Brutus and Cassius, who saw themselves as liberators aiming to rescue the Republic from the grasp of what they perceived as tyranny. So, Caesar's back in Rome. We learned that he had a mistress, Cornelia, and that. her son uh, was uh, by the name of Brutus. Now, we've heard the name Brutus before. Uh, Brutus was the king slayer. What does Murph? Uh, he was the king uh, slayer way, way, way back in the day, right? So the name was very famous, right? Horton is who has followed. Thank you very much, Horton. Great to see you. So Brutus, during Caesar's reign, it could have even been his half-son. We just don't know. But anyway, uh, Caesar had a very kind of a fondness for Brutus. However, Brutus, because of the family name, graffiti started to appear around Rome. Is Brutus sleeping? Why is this tyrant still in charge? Blah, 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 blah. So Brutus, uh, well, he sided with the conspirators. And their plan was to remove this tyrant from Rome and restore order as the Republic. So they came up with a plan. They decided, well, we need to kill Caesar. How they kind of came to the idea was they were going to trap him in the Senate, uh, away from prying eyes, but they had to get their timing just right. Now, at the time, the, the original Senate House, uh, well, it wasn't in use. They were using this makey up Senate House, which was actually in the, uh, the Forum of Pompey, Pompey's Forum. So on the morning, um, Caesar's wife begged him not to go. She just had a terrible dream and she felt something was bad. Caesar at this stage, because everything was grand, you know, he started to be, he came almost too comfortable in his surroundings because he was doing so many great things. He even dismissed his main guard. The conspirators also knew that they had to distract Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony was so loyal to Caesar. He was his general and also his friend. The two became very good friends over the years. So they had a distraction, a ploy to make sure that Mark Antony couldn't be there. Uh, so the conspirators said, we will uh, plan to get Caesar in the Senate house. And this looks at the Roman attire, the clothing of the day. And you think about the toga, right? Uh, which was the senatorial uniform. Not everyone in Rome wore togas. It was just senators and stuff. Kind of like you look at magistrates and the legal system. They wear the funny wigs and all the, the gowns and all this jazz. That sort of stuff, right? Anyway, the, the normal person wore a pair of jeans. Well, they wore something. They weren't jeans. They didn't have jeans back then. But if they had, they'd be Levi. <laughs> a brilliant Latin joke. But anyway, um, so the toga was able to hide a dagger easily. You didn't need swords. It was a dagger. So Caesar, uh, you know, throws caution to the wind, tells his wife, it's fine. I'm just, the Senate want to meet me. They want to talk about something and we're going to get sorted. It'll be grand. I'll be back in an hour, sure. Caesar goes to the Senate house. He's met with the senators and a normal day starts, you know, Oh, we have this great idea to do this and oh, we need money for that and blah, blah, blah. And then the diversion was set. Two guys, uh, two of the conspirators went up to Caesar and a few of them were now standing around Caesar, who at the time, I mean, it's, it's, he, he, he was going in that direction. Caesar used to sit on a wicker chair. Himself and Pompey, when they were co-consuls, um, they used to sit in wicker chairs. Caesar then upgraded his chair to a big, solid oak chair. And now, because he had no competition, Caesar now had a gold chair. I and mean, this thing pretty much looked like a throne. So anyway, 
all the senators and whatever, they're all kind of standing up close to Caesar, having the chat, right? And um, before before Caesar knows what happens, one of the conspirator, uh, conspirators uh, takes out his, his dagger and he goes to stab Caesar. Now, he didn't exactly hit him a killing blow. He jabbed the side of his neck. Uh, Caesar, you know, absolute, what the hell are you doing? Grabbed a hold of him, used his stylus and jabbed him in the arm. You, 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 you know, what are you doing, you fool? What are you playing at? And with that then, that was the signal for the rest of the conspirators to start going over and jab away. And that's precisely what they did. 36 wounds, I believe it was, or 33 or something like that. Stab wounds were afflicted to Caesar. And the final stab seemingly came from Brutus. Now, at the time, William Shakespeare made this famous, all the way back in whatever it was, the 1600s, A2 Bruti, or A2 Bruti, and you. In reality, Caesar almost certainly didn't say that. The Romans absolutely idolised the Greeks. And for Romans to be able to speak Greek showed an upper class, or, you know, uh, it brought some sort of... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It just brought some sort of uh, importance to their being. So they would often speak in Greek to one another. Gravitas and all this. So uh, whatever the Greek equivalent to a new, my child, seemingly they were the last words that Caesar had spoke. Caesar now on the ground, dying, could do nothing else, um, being ashamed of what had happened, pulled his own toga up over his face and died. That was the end of Gaius Julius Caesar. It was said that Caesar's final resting place was underneath a statue of Pompey. Uh, Caesar had the statue brought back into the Senate because, again, Caesar had a soft spot for Pompey. So Caesar now lies dead on the Ides of March. The aftermath caused all sorts of problems. The conspirators created such a vacuum of power in Rome. They had never thought of what do we do after we assassinate Caesar. They didn't think that far ahead. They created a massive, massive vacuum. And they never filled it. The immediate aftermath of Caesar's assassination was characterised by confusion, fear and a struggle for power among various factions. The public, the Senate and the legions were divided in their loyalty and how their vision for Rome's future. Some viewed the assassination as heroes who had acted in the best interests of the Republic. Others saw them as murderers who unlawfully killed a popular leader and a champion of the people. This division set the stage for further conflict. As Caesar's allies and supporters sought to avenge his death and claim supremacy over the Republic. Uh, now, the ensuing uh, civil wars would eventually lead to the end of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. In a, in a, in a strange twist of faith, in a very strange twist of faith, Caesar, in his will, his final will and testament, well, he willed everything to his newly adopted son, his nephew, Octavian. Octavian, uh, whose sister Octavia, which Caesar wanted to marry off to Pompey, in which was refused. Well, Octavian had spent a lot of time with Caesar. Caesar was technically grooming him for greater things. Caesar willed his entire estate to Octavian, much to the surprise and horror of Caesar's closest friend and most loyal ally, Mark Antony. Mark Antony was disgusted over this, and so much so had an instant resentment to Octavian. Octavian at the time was still quite young, right? Joey Bolo is here! Good to see you, man! Uh, we need to climb here, lads. Things are going to get terribly bumpy, terribly quick. Let's go up there, back to 7,000 feet where it's safer. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to go flight level change. Uh, we're going to get speed down. Speed down, Murphy. There we go. 
Start climbing, the devil. Speed down to about 240 knots. That'll see us over the, the initial holy humbugs. All right. Uh, Joe, it's good to see you. My vacuum broke. It sucked. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so, you now had this sort of an issue. Caesar's gone. There's a massive vacuum of power. And the conspirators under Brutus and all these other guys, Cassilius, well, uh, what do we do here now? Uh, enter uh, the son of Pompey, Magnus. And he was able to raise legions over in Spain. Mark Anthony, again, he was a great general, but he knew this was a problem. So for the time, he allied himself... Can I get a refund? ...or, or allied himself with Octavian. This became the second triumvirate, right? Um, there was Antony, there was Octavian, and some other dude. The Ides of March were March 15th by our calendar. Would have been a cool date for ending the series. That's timing night, Zeb. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, fly dive, good to see you. Welcome in, man. So, um, anyway, so they, they joined forces because they needed to get rid of the other folks, mainly Pompey's old legions, because they saw opportunity here as well. And, you know, the whole thing just became kind of silly, right? Uh, now, how do we get speed into this? One speed, please. Better speed up. See, so can we get 280 now? Oh, we got 270 odd. Uh, we're okay altitude wise for a moment. So. Uh, let's see here now. Da, 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 da. So the division set the stage for further conflict as Caesar's allies and supporters sought to avenge his death. Which we're aware of that, right? Um, the assassination of Caesar intended to preserve the Republic ironically became a catalyst for its dissolution. In the intricate aftermath, Julius Caesar's assassination, his will revealed a surprising choice for his primary heir, his grandnephew, Gaius Octavius, known to history as Octavian. This bequest not only catapulted Octavian into the forefront of Roman politics, but also ignited a complex struggle for Roman control of the state. Octavian, who would later be renamed Augustus and become the first Roman emperor, initially found himself in a precarious position. Navigating the treacherous waters of Roman power dynamics, it missed factions still loyal to the old republic and spectre of Caesar's legacy. Octavian's rise to power was fraught with challenges. He faced stiff opposition from the remaining supporters of Pompey who viewed Caesar's heir as a continuation of a regime that they had opposed. Moreover, Octavian had to deal with the ambitions of Mark Anthony, Caesar's trusted general and a formidable political figure in his own right. Anthony's influence and military command made him a crucial ally, but also a potential rival. The alliance between Octavian and Anthony, formalised through the Second Triumvirate, along with Marcus Aemilius Lepidus, was marked by mutual necessity rather than genuine cooperation. The alliance's initial success in defeating the assassinations of Caesar at the Battle or the Assassins of Caesar at the Battle of the Philippi in 42 BC did little to quell the underlying tensions between its members. These tensions were further uh, exacerbated by Anthony's relationship with Cleopatra, the Queen of Egypt, which raised suspicions about his loyalties and intentions. Roman propaganda, fueled by Octavian, portrayed Antony as a traitor to Rome, ensnared by Cleopatra's influence and plotting to carve out an Eastern Empire for himself. Right? The conflict between Octavian and Anthony eventually led to a climatic battle at Actium in 31 BC. This naval engagement off the western coast of Greece decisively ended Anthony and Cleopatra's ambitions and confirmed Octavian as the uncontested ruler of Rome. In the wake of his victory, Octavian returned to Rome, where he skillfully consolidated power, laying the foundations for the Roman Empire. The transition from republic to empire was marked by Octavian's careful accumulation of powers and titles, culminating in the Senate bestowing upon him title of Augustus, in 27 BC. 
The rise of Augustus marked a significant transformation in Roman governance and the beginning of the imperial era. His leadership brought about a period of relative peace and stability. This was known as the Pax Romana, the Roman way, fundamentally changing the Roman political landscape and setting the stage for centuries of imperial rule. Caesar's choice of Octavian as his heir, therefore, had far-reaching implications, not only for the immediate power struggles that followed his death, but also for the future trajectory of Roman history. Now, Augustus, he became known as Caesar Augustus. The name Caesar followed on through every single emperor thereafter. The name was also used as Kaiser in Germany or Tsar in Russia. The name Caesar, it rings true to this day, right? The elevation of Octavian to the position of Rome's first emperor signaled a profound shift in the Roman, Sen uh, Roman state's governance, marking the conclusion and the conclusive end of the Roman Republic and hurdling the beginning of the Roman Empire. So the Senate awarded him title of Augustus, cementing his status as supreme ruler in 27 BC. The title not only conferred upon him the immense power, but also symbolised the establishment of a new political order, which Rome would achieve unparalleled levels of peace and posterity. The reign of Augustus initiated the Pax Romana. Have I just read this? I have. But anyway, a relative peace that followed and allowed the Roman Empire to flourish for over two centuries. This era was characterised by significant advancements in architecture, arts and culture, alongside the expansion and solidification of Roman territories. The transition from Republic, where power was obstinately distributed amongst various elected officials, to an empire being ruled by a single individual. This represented a fundamental change in the political landscape. Under Augustus, the mechanisms of government uh, and governance were meticulously reformed to centralise power within the emperor's hands. While still maintaining the outward appearance of republican traditions, so much so of having the senate there and, you know, Augustus played ball with the senate. Great idea. What do you guys need? And all this sort of stuff. The delicate balancing act enabled Augustus to consolidate his authority without inciting any opposition from Rome's senatorial or equestrian classes. It's friggin' nuts, right? <laughs> Give us here, but he's not. The Roman Empire, right? The establishment of the Roman Empire under Augustus laid down the foundations for an era of dominance in the ancient world. It projected Roman influence across Europe, North Africa, and the Near East. This transition orchestrated by Augustus forever altered the trajectory of history, seeing the stage for the Roman Empire to become one of the most enduring and influential empires in history. The legacy of this transformation is a testament to Augustus' political acumen and also his vision for Rome. The Roman Empire from the reign of Augustus in 27 BC to its eventual fall in, 40, uh, in 476 AD was a period of remarkable achievements. Significant transitions that shaped the course of Western history and an overview of some of the key aspects over the different emperors over the years, but we're going to have a look at that now in a moment, right? So, like, what a transition. Considering, you know, 10 weeks we cover the Gallic Wars, 10 years, and now in one episode we, we, we covered about 50 years, <laughs> right? But the idea, anyway, you know, for all that Caesar did, that was the heavy lifting. That was the groundwork. That was the early work to kind of solidify um, where Rome was headed. Augustus, on the other side, or on the other hand, he was able to take that foundation and build onto it, right? And like when we talk about certain things that, from that Roman period that we can see today, the art, the architecture, the wording, the naming, you look at Washington DC, look at the buildings, what are they pointing back to? That's where this whole thing kind of took off. And like the gas thing, the, the whole story of Caesar the Gallic Wars in particular, uh, but the whole story of Caesar was relatively lost, if you like, 
throughout time. It took uh, William Shakespeare and his play called Caesar to bring this back into the, when I say modern mindset, you know, you're talking back in the day when, um, back in the day when, you know, William Shakespeare and the Globe Theatre were there. Well, 16 something, you know? And that's where we get the name A2 Bruti or A2 Brutus uh, and you, Brutus. Shakespeare said that. You know what I mean? Hey, Ashley is here. Good to see you. <laughs> We're doing 265 at 7,000 feet. It's grand. We rang the Italians. They said it was totally fine. Totally fine. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, we'll probably have to climb here now in a moment. We are on our way to Florence, over this hill, and we shall be in there. Uh, Paul Turk, good to see you. Sure. <laughs> Can last, I get a refund? Uh, the last emperor was named Romulus Augustus. Augustulus. Oh. Uh, like some of the emperor names, you know, you had oh, Caesar, Augustus, Germanicus, Africanus. This is all in one name. They, they took all the other great names, right? Um, and like of all the emperors of Rome, like some of them were absolutely incredible. Incredible, right? Max Relius, you know, Hadrian. Um, then you had a couple of the mad lads in there as well. Like it's fascinating stuff. Really, really fascinating stuff. But like that whole time, that whole period, like can you imagine like how mad it was? What's this 60% of the time thing? 60% of the time, it works every time. Do you know? Uh, Energizer, good to see you. Dreamy, sleepy, nighty, snoozy snooze. There's one of them too. So, lads, I have to ask you, right, over the last 10 weeks of what we've covered, you know, all the historical stuff, is there anything that stands out to you? What was your favourite part of it? Uh, and it doesn't have to be on the history side. What about the They've aircraft? studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every, every time. time. What was your favourite aircraft? I mean, we've, we've, we've handled quite a few. I mean, the Comanche was in there, the WB Sim 172, the H-160 helicopter, uh, the TBM, the PC-12, the FSR-500, DC-9. Uh, we took out the Shorts 360. There's been a lot of them. What's been your favourite aircraft? The DC-6 to me always stands out as being just an incredible aircraft. My favourite part was when Murph fell over in the chair. That wasn't a Monday. <laughs> Thanks, Energizer. <laughs> oh. Not part of the 10-week thing, but yeah, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. H-160 in the hills. Yeah, that was fun. Been a great series on Murph. Credit to you, Mr. Tuton. Dan! Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. What's your favourite part of the whole ro the Gallic Wars? When Murphy fell off his chair. Wait, what? <laughs> look at the state. Ah, lads, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Jeez, it's only stunning. This is absolutely stunning. We better play some tunage. Nice says, for me, it was a lovely series. That's the wrong button, Murph. For me, it was a lovely series. Alas, it is now followed by weeks of indigestible ATC. Viper, you're going to get yourself, like, a launch of a hammer. So you'll see there's certain things blocked for repetitiveness. You can't, like, edge around them, man. When did he fall off the chair? I didn't fall off the chair. Don't worry about it. Fake news.
All right, all right, all right. I'm looking here for um, a song. Hang on. Where did I hide this? No. Where's the one I used the other day? Oh, that, that does kind of work, doesn't it? Looking good. The bottle get you. The bottle get you. Hey, Monty is here. Good to see you. Delta Tango, you're very welcome aboard. How are you, man? Happy Monday, everybody. Uh, Shuffle Shoes, thank you very much. Murph is dusting off his LPs. I'm trying to find a song from last week. It was like, uh, it was blues. It was brilliant. A scary wolf, right? I've enjoyed the series, happened to have an open moment uh, when you were alive today. So I stopped in to hit the like and say hi. Thank you very, very much indeed. I went away for five minutes, forgot to say my height and smashed into the hill. Uh oh, it's all right. <laughs> Music is not terribly Roman. Where is this one I'm looking for? Where's the music I'm after? I can't find it, lads. Although I do like this music. This kind of works. Let's play this one. So the Gallic Wars, lads, 10 episodes, 10 weeks in the bag. What a journey.
tower. Eventually, we're landing here into Florence. Dougal, have you been drinking? I have, Ted. I've been drinking like a mad idiot. <laughs> oh, I'm very upset. I won't get my weekly dosage oh, of Roman history. Oh. Hayden UK, thank you for the bits. Hemingbird, thank you for the bits. We're handy now, lads. Before you know it, you're going to start a hype train again. Now, we were to go the other side of the hill where we're not supposed to land. Let's try that out for the crack. Do you know? We need all sorts of drag on this one. Count Sepson a vampire? Really? Nice. Ten weeks. Isn't it mad, lads? I'm not sure Hemingbird can behave. Oh, behave! We're in a very steep dive here. We need landing gear, but we're going too fast. Isn't it beautiful? This jet is so good, isn't it? We're still too fast with the gear. Right. Here they come. Silent P. Why can't we hear Ptolemy when he goes to the bathroom? Silent P. Brilliant. Oh, look at this. The time of day and everything. This is absolutely gorgeous looking. Hey, everyone. Come see how good this looks. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Incredible stuff. Right, a very short final. Let me shrink it onto the runway. Oh, man alive. This is absolutely gorgeous looking. Look at the state of this. We'll attempt external... We'll attempt external landing for the crack. Easy. Can it be done, lads? Jason, look at the Vulcan. Easy. Easy now, Merv. Easy. 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 Touchdown, 166. We'll take it. An external landing for the crack. <laughs> Jeez, look at the size of the Vulcan. Christ. All is well. Right, lads. This is our second last stop. It's a quick jaunt down to the Imperial City of Rome. We're going to depart this way now. Just do a Yui and depart the opposite side. Check your fuel if you need to. This is the last hurrah of the Gallic Wars. How displaced is that threshold? It's, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Imagine seeing that in front of your head. It's a Vulcan. It's only logical, Captain. All right, just get me trim set up here. So this is, um... I think this is a Gaia simulation scenery for uh, Florence. It's absolutely stunning. But it doesn't look 100% right. Do I have two sceneries? Huh. I think we're okay. I right, just get me trim set up. Gallic butter. Oh, Muse, I'm an absolute devil for that. I haven't heard from Bobby. It drives me absolutely nuts. One more train. Ah, Hemingbird, you're really kind. Give us like, is it over yet? Give us, it's almost over. We're nearly there, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm waiting on Bobby to come back to me to say that he has Sim Connect working. Hasn't happened yet. We're just going to go underneath the Vulcan, as you do. Right, one notch of flash to take off. Are we ready, sports fans? The final flight of the Gallic Wars. Let's be having you. We're rolling. 
Ich bin live. Is 80? Yep, see Daisy. Has the rank gear up? Flaps in. Ascari has intercepted some wine. Brilliant. All right, easy now. Spin us to the right. Let's go check out Florence, shall we? Photogrammetry for the win. Look at the state of this, lads. Isn't this gorgeous? Beautiful. Lima Kilo Mike, you take care of my dude. Did I see that there's a beta for Sim Connect? I didn't see it yet. Wait, was there a beta before? I think there was, but like. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's not done yet, though. Right, what am I looking for? This works. Colonel Fork, you're very welcome aboard. Sup? All right. Did you see the state of that formation flying? Hang on a second, lads. Right, so we're about to cruise up to uh, 7,000 feet. Where are the lads? They were over there a second ago. Jeez, look at the weather over there. This is only gorgeous. Tato have been opened. Brilliant.
I mean, look at the state of that with the weather and everything. Isn't that absolutely stunning? At this time of day. Man alive, that's so good. The formation flight tonight, haven't they been absolutely brilliant, lads? Incredible. Colonel Fork, hope you're having a great day, man. Great to see you. Attila the Hun? <laughs> Those jets look so good though, don't they? That's friggin' class looking. Hang on a second, this needs a bit of something. Absolute state of it. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Big Sierra has just sponsored doing a thing, pressing a button, and I need to catch it up on the screen. Welcome to the flight crew, my dude. Thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, man. And uh, thank you guys over on YouTube for all the likes. You're very, very I don't know what to be saying. These are only brilliant and awesome. Thank you very, very much. One day, Marv, you'll have to pay that tune I sent you. Oh, yes, Colonel Fork. Oh, yes. I will, I will. I won't do it now, but I will. I have to add it to a button. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> ah, brilliant. Gibbo, right? Ah, this is... You're going to make me tear up. He says, hi, in all, serious, in all seriousness, Murph, uh, I'm pretty sure I would have had a much greater appreciation for all the things history if you were my teacher instead of the one I had. <laughs> you should have been a teacher. Not of aviation. You're crap at that. <laughs> <laughs> but history, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Give a thank you very much. Ah, I need that button that... Aww. I'll find it there somewhere. Yeah, listen, you know, the history stuff is not for everyone. Um, and any of the Monday Night series that we do, they're not for everyone, right? I mean, it's 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 trying to find the balance. But, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I appreciate it. And it's it's... What I try and do, regardless of the, um, you know, regardless of the subject matter we're looking at, it's it's planning routes that give us a bit of variety in the challenge. And uh, it could be the aircraft, it could be weather settings, uh, or it could even it could even be the airports. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, oh, I appreciate that, man. And uh, can I get a refund? No, shake off. There's none. There's no refunds. Fire one zero. I think I saw Murph blushing. No, I just, I generally look like that all the time, you know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, I appreciate that, man. Like the IFR stuff, I'm looking forward to that because, right, there's learning when it comes to phraseology, right? Which is which is a great part of it. But 
But there's also going to be a focus on, you know, the aircraft systems, the MACDU, the FMC, um, and, and some general kind of IFR procedures that we're going to be following as well. So, again, the idea is try and put a little bit in there for everyone. But, uh, yeah, man, it's like, look at the state of this. Now, we're kind of stuck in the clouds as we kind of ramble into Rome, but I reckon we're going to be good here. Right? I reckon we're going to be good. What's our ETA to Rome? 20 minutes? Look at the time in here, lads. You know what I mean? Uh, it's true, Captain Murph. This is a great way to bring some very ancient history into a modern flight. Thank you, Delta Tango. What's the hood on, or the hood add on to the right? Gilmere, if you just uh, have a look at the link above, it's called the Rambog Mord Wheel. He created it here. Look at this for the formation, though. Look at the state of that. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And like, and that's the thing, right? And that's what I love about Microsoft Flight Simulator. We can explore and learn all these things together in group flights. Like, I absolutely love that. And like, I've learned a ton of stuff uh, from you guys. A ton of stuff. You know? Keen Africa has to vote in the in his first referendum on Friday. Man, Keen. Make your voice heard and all that sort of stuff. You know? Any excuse to fly with you, lot. <laughs> it's class though, isn't it? Like it is. It's a lot of fun. And like, you know, all the different subject matters that we have, like there's tons of them, right? We'll play a game here now. Guess the Monday night series that we've done. Are you ready? I won't play it all, I'll just play some of it. You have to guess it though. It wasn't really a Monday night series. What was it? What was it? I'm not even 18 yet. Come on, Keane. Uh, we must now be talking about the upcoming IFR Vatsim class. Uh, I drifted for a moment. Thought you were talking about the avionics found in the aircraft. There you go. Uh, no, not the Wonders. Not the DC-3 flight. Not the Orient Express. It is a good memory, though, lads. N n none of them. Oh, that's a hard one to start with, isn't it? Not India. No, no. Cooking in prison? Wait, what? No. <laughs> Japan, no. Vietnam, no. Jesus, you don't remember that one. Your face? Your face. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. We flew with Beechcraft. Can you not remember it? We'll have to do it again, so. It wasn't a Monday night series. We just, we did it all in one day. I remember the tune, says Muse. That's the start. Gibbo, Gibbo got it. It was the Bremen. It was the Bremen. Well done, Gibbo. Right, here's another one for you. Wars. No, it's not Skoda Wars. No. There was a train in it. A train. Man, look at the scenery. Jesus, lads. I don't like this game anymore. But if it was easy, sure, anyone can play it. Not the Orient Express. No, no. It was the first train series we did. I like trains. The train in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't Hogwarts, no. What was the name of it? The coast something. Train sim. <laughs> Murphy's playing in his train. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> no. The coast starlight. Yes, yes, yes. Right, lads. I expect you all to get this. Did you get it? I'll do, I'll do it again, right? I 
one pipes the top. It was India. The candle scented curry. That's the one. Brilliant. It was the candle scented curry. Yes. You're getting better now. <laughs> it was the Bremen. <laughs> Brilliant. What was this one? It wasn't a series. This was another marathon stream. I love this music. Yep. The Middle East. Ah, you are very good. What about this one? That's seriously good music. The Northwest Passage. Yes. Yes. It's so getting good now. Murphy's only fans. <laughs> Yeah, music gets the guitar one, yeah. What about this one? So they're all from our Monday night series, yeah? Muse got it again. Muse got it again. It was the Orange Express. Jesus. Had to be right sometime. <laughs> Logs are done. The wonders of the world. Now you got it. It's really good, isn't it? The wonders. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Let me hit this one. Hey Johnny Ardvark, good to see you. Anything at night? The Seven Wonders of Tipperary. Wonders was my first series when I joined. Nice. <laughs> Give up. Enya wrestles a bear. <laughs> this is the Seven Natural Wonders. This is where we saw the work of Jefferson 2001 when he gave us uh, Victoria Falls. Do you remember that? It's harder than the Irish learning test. This one was my absolute favourite. Super tie got it. Chair Wars, one man's quest. Victoria Falls was a revelation, yeah. Yeah, this is back to the 1940s. I really enjoyed that. I freaking love that. The, um, like the Warbirds. Oh. And like, when you think about it, not only is there a B-17 in production, there's also the Lancaster as well, and the Hurricane, and we now have some of the German aircraft. There could be a back to the 19, late 30s um, series at some stage in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, there were slippers, yeah. The 40s might need a redo. Yeah, I think so. At some stage they will. Yeah, the music is really good. It's all epidemic sound music. It's really good. Crocs in a clear blue sky. <laughs> Operation Crocs in a clear blue sky. Right, how are we go it's looking beautiful. The sun is Hello about there. to set. 
Can anyone remember this lake and how important it was when we did the um, Hannibal? Uh, K3, many thanks for the follow. You're welcome in. Good to see you. It's only gorgeous, isn't it nice? So we're cruising here, 225 knots. Why are we slowing down? Speed up there, Betsy, will you? So I'm hoping the clouds kind of disperse when we get down to Rome. They should do. It's good to see you, K3. Welcome in. So we're on our way to Rome. We're going to be flying over the Imperial City. And this marks the end of our Gallic War series. So in our last bit of news, right, the Roman Empire established under Augustus laid down the foundation for an era of dominance. Augustus, the first emperor, ruled from 27 BC to 14 AD. He was fir Rome's first emperor, established the Principate, a system of monarchy headed by an emperor bearing a facade of a republic. His reign marked the beginning of the Pax Romana, a period of relative peace and stability. Next up we had the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Following Augustus, this dynasty included notable emperors like Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius and Nero, with Nero reigning from 54 to 68 AD, ended in disgrace and his death precipitated the year of the four emperors, a chaotic period that saw four emperors ascend to the throne in rapid succession. Next up we had the Flavian dynasty. Uh, yeah, Flavian. Vespasian, founder of the Flavian, or Flavian dynasty, um, ruled from 69 to 79, followed by his sons Titus and Domitian. The Colosseum, Rome's iconic amphitheatre, was completed under Titus in AD 80 and stood as a symbol of Roman architectural and engineering prowess. Then we had the five good emperors. They included Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius, Pius and Marcus Aurelius between 96 and 180 AD. They were known for their wise and modern rule. Under them, the empire reached its territorial peak and experienced significant cultural and economic prosperity. Then we had crisis of the third century, a period marked by political instability, economic decline and external invasions, leading to a temporary division of the empire into the Gallic Empire and the, uh, is it Palmyrene Empire? The crisis eventually resolved by Emperor Diocletian through administrative, military and economic reforms, including the division of the empire into the Western and Eastern Roman empires. Then we had Constantine and Christianity. Constantine the Great, who reigned in 306 to 337 AD, legalized Christianity uh, with the Edict of Milan in AD 313. He became the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity. He also founded Constantinople, which would later become the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. Today, we call that city Istanbul. The fall of the Western Roman Empire gradually lost their territory to various Germanic tribes. And in AD 410, Rome was sacked by the Visigoths, led by Alaric. The traditional date for the fall of Western Roman Empire is 476, when the last Roman Emperor Romulus Augustulus was disposed or deposed by the Germanic chieftain Odoacer. The Germans and the Britons, Germanic tribes including the Goths, the Vandals and the Franks played significant roles in the decline of the Western Empire. The Romans faced recurring conflicts with these groups, culminating in the migration period that reshaped the map of Europe. Britain was conquered under Emperor Claudius in AD 43. The Roman presence in Britain lasted until around 410 AD when the Romans withdrew their forces and administration as the empire's focus shifted to a more pressing threat elsewhere. Legacy and the Byzantine or the Byzantian Empire. The Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantian Empire continued to exist until it fell to the Ottoman Turks in 1453. The Byzantine preserved Roman law, culture and Christian faith serving as a bridge between the ancient and medieval worlds. Throughout its existence, the Roman Empire faced numerous challenges, including leadership disputes, economic troubles and external pressures, but it also left a lasting legacy in terms of culture, law, architecture and governance that continues to influence the modern world to this day. 
Isn't that absolutely insane? So, friends, as we approach the Imperial City, we're about seven minutes away, I'd say. Five minutes out. Ah, brilliant. I might, uh, I might just bring the old time of day down a smidgen. Watch this reckon, lads. This will get all terribly... You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Jesus, look at that. Would you look at the suffering state of that? Not beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? I'm talking about history, does anyone know where I put my wallet earlier? <laughs> the Goths or the vampires? The Goths. Why did Constantinople get the works? Woodius, Polyusius, Frantius. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Check the back of your sofa and the fridge. Murphus, Polish, Woodus. Marcus Aurelius, my favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great emperor. Cool with the red cloud. Isn't that gorgeous? Your mama is over there. No, your mama. In a Firefly livery aircraft. Created by our very own Gibbo. Look at this state. Ah, Jesus, lads. Would you, I mean... Just get a good hard look at that. It's absolutely... Oh, wait, me sim is after freezing. Jesus, we're still alive. I thought, I thought we were goosed. <laughs> we're all right, lads. We're alive. For the second there now, I thought we were in big trouble. I'm miles behind now because it froze. Don't mind it, lads. Totally fine. Totally fine. It's like history repeating itself. <laughs> Tis grand, lads. Yeah, all is well in the realm, lads. Nothing to worry about here at all. Not at all. We're moving well. The clouds are going to make things interesting. I reckon we can drop altitude here a little bit. So we're currently at 7,000. Let's get a little bit kind of adventurous here. Down the road to about three and a half. V speed. Down the road we go. 2,000 feet per minute. Let's see what happens here, sports fans. This is beautiful. Anyone name the racetrack? Hello there. Hello there. Can anyone name the racetrack? Scripted PRN, thank you very much indeed for the follow. Cheers, man. Who was the nutty one in the gladiator? The nutty one in the gladiator? Oh, th that emperor. Uh, who was he supposed to be? Rugello, that's the one. No, it's not Monza. I don't think it's Monza. Miguelo or Mugello. That's the one, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're getting a bit of a, a scenery kick here. That's a good sign. As we approach the Eternal City, lads. So the plan here is we're going to burst through the clouds and we're going to see a whole lot of stuff. Isn't this pretty? Look at this. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, Commodus, was it? Monza was the only Italian one I knew. That's okay, Electrics. That's why I asked... But it was, because I didn't know. Low fuel. Oh, Jesus. Totally fine. Totally fine. We have sufficient fuel to make it. Now, let's see here. Let's see what we can do here to make this look all very terribly fancy. Yes. Yes, that is how it should be. Something like that, right? A little something like that. Get the old camera set up now, lads. India? Imola? Oh, do you remember Imola? That was a great circuit as well, wasn't it? Okay, I think that's looking pretty. Right. The Gallic Wars, lads. What a journey this has been. I 
want to thank everyone for flying along for the last 10 weeks. It's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Alright! A flight over the Coliseum on the way out. What a way to go, lads. What a friggin' way to go. Right, where's the airport? Behind you, Paddy. Right, don't mind me for a minute. Let's get ourselves back to the airport. This was fun. Right, Rome Herb. 
We're gonna go in for three, four. We're very low fuel. Oh, Jesus. Right, get ourselves turned around. In for the landing. <laughs> hey, thanks for that. I guess I was turned around here. Fuel is like, we're going to be just like gliding in. It's fine, lads. <laughs> Nothing to see. We've Campino just beside us, but we need to go to Herb. All shall be well in the realm. Absolutely amazing flying with you, lads. It's just incredible getting to fly with you. How are we looking here now? Right, continue our approach from this side. Rumbling. We're very low on fuel. This is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, she's giving out to us. She's screaming at us, in fact. Oh, dear. What is my fuel level? Ah, sure, we've nearly plenty. Thank you very much indeed, lads. Really do appreciate it. But these these series, these streams, the whole channel, the community, it's nothing. It's nothing without you guys. And I genuinely mean that. You know, there's other communities, there's other streamers and all that. Um, you know, it's 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 you guys is what's you make this thing work. You know, I've I've said it before, like I'm not one for, hey, look at me, do this. Uh, you know, I'm not one I can't like. I fell off my chair for crying out loud. Do you know what I mean? I can't be left to my own devices. Does anyone see the runway yet? Jeez. Oh, it's over there, I think. Do we have runway lights? All right, drop it the gear. Now, let's see where the runway is, because I cannot see... I cannot see the runway! I don't know lights to the runway, really. This is going to be like lots of fun. Uh Okay. We've no runway lights. Hang on a second. That'll do. There's sufficient lighting here. Right. Low fuel. I can't believe, like, we planned this to an absolute T, right? No fuel prevents a fireball when you crash. See, there's always a positive. Top content makes top viewers. Ah. Uh, starting says there's some useful words actually flagged by the mod bot. It doesn't like people being repetitive. I just went to Campino. Not enough room for the hunter at this one. No worries. Captain John Luke Picard. Right, there's a runway down there somewhere. I can see it. Easy now, Jemima. We are so low on fuel. 17 knots of a headwind? Or, cro or yeah, headwind. Jesus. More fun than roaming the streets. <laughs> right, here we go. Yep. We're going the wrong way. No, we're going the right way. It's the right place. It's all right, lads. I found it. Continue your approach. Oh, it is windy. The headwind has turned into a six-knot crosswind, as you do. 500. 500. Right, here we go. It's all happening now, lads. We started here just 10 weeks ago. 10 weeks, though, right? She doesn't like a crosswind, this thing. Jesus. Easy. 11 knots. Holy crap. The wind is giving it socks here. Easy. E Ooh, easy. Oh, not stable at all. Easy. 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 Just Dreamy, sleepy, ah, nighty, snoozy, no! snooze. Just planned it, Murphy. Just planned it. 76. <laughs> 76 trombones in there like the swimwear. Brilliant. Ah, well, that wasn't such a chore now, was it? God almighty, lads, that was absolutely nuts. Make it daytime so we can see everyone now behind us on the ramp. As we, we know what to do. Assume the position. I'm going to say hello to all our pilots. 
who've been flying along with us. Ah, look at just lining up that ramp. That's savage. Serious stars. One ahead, quick, quick, get down there, quick. There's Muse fan. God, oh, Jesus, yucky booze, Muse. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right. Airlock, it's great to see you, mate. Let's ramble down to all the planes. Oh, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. Right, lads, you know the drill. Flash your lights, move your ailerons, your rudders, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. All the aircraft we have is so cool. Wombat, Renoir, absolutely incredible flying. Man alive. The formation flying tonight is off the hook, wasn't it? Where's my button? And here they are. Quite alright, untypical gamer. We made a phone call and the Italians are like, no problem at all. You can park as close to the runway as you like, lads. Dougal, have you been drinking? I have, Ted. <laughs> I've been drinking like a mad <laughs> Egypt. It's totally fine. Not a bother. Got to pay off a few lads. A few sesterci here and there. Half a denarii. But it was grand. And there, friends, we have it. Wasn't that a lot of fun? As he turned his microphone around. <laughs> right, hit the parking brake quick. The Gallic Wars has now been completed. Another thing. Another thing we've done as a community together. And I got a number for you to call. <laughs> Guys, I want to say a massive thank you. Um... 10 weeks doing this, right? It's, it's been a lot of fun. We learned a lot of stuff and I've witnessed such incredible community spirit, amazing flying. Uh, we've, we've had so many comments, you know, from people. We don't forget anything that's said. You know, some people fall on hard times or have life struggles. But here we are 10 weeks later and we're looking forward to the next adventure. So a massive thanks. Uh, it's a privilege getting to fly with you guys, and I really mean that. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, give us favourite word. But um, to our mods, lads, thank you very, very much indeed for all the help you've given me over the last 10 weeks. Uh, we've travelled some amount of mileage, over 3,000 miles on this one, and uh, a whole load of different aircraft with a whole load of history. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun learning it and getting to chat to you about it. Do you know? So starting next week, we're going to be kicking off a brand new series the IF4 ATC course, and uh, yeah, that's 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 going to be fun. That's going to be fun. We're going to be looking at airliners, uh, as well as some GA aircraft as well. And uh, the focus is on the communication, the phraseology, what do we say, and when do we say it. So that's all going to be starting next week. So tell your friends, share the poster where you can, social media, other discords, let everyone know what we're doing. It's available to Xbox and PC pilots as well. And uh, yeah, a lot of work has gone into it. So thank you all so very, very much for everyone who's flown along on every single episode of this series. Thank you very, very much indeed. It's been awesome. 
for those not flying but keep us company here in the chat it just wouldn't be the same without you uh so thank you also very very much indeed so what we're going to do i need to press the buttons and uh we'll we'll finish up with our trailer and uh because we know what's happening for our next series leave that park there and uh oh yeah and i forgot to say as well night Zep gave me savage help with this one lads right man so i mean i probably didn't show these off quite enough but night Zep sent me books so i can do some learning because there's only so much you can get on the internet plus when it comes to researching you can't just go what's on the internet you have to do your due diligence uh, as mr Tutone taught me uh you know so he sent me over to really, 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 really good books, uh, Roman history, uh, but it's done in a way that's easy to kind of, oh yeah, I remember what happened there, do you know? Plus I've other books here Hello as well, um, and a ton of documentaries have been watched as well. So uh, nice step, thank you very much for them, man. I really do appreciate it. So that's it. Shinoel, um, I'm away now. We're back on Wednesday. We're checking out the TDS uh, GTN, the pro version of the 750. Uh, we're also going to be checking out some beautiful scenery by uh, Robbie from 613 Studio. Yeah, that's the one. And uh, it should be fun. Asterix isn't history. No, no, we know that. We know that. But it's it's it, it gives you an idea of what goes on, you know. So that's the story, lads. Thank you all so very much indeed for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll play this trailer on the way out. And I will see you on Wednesday. We'll see you on Wednesday. Take care. Shannon Control, good evening. Firefly 235, TBM on the ground at Shannon with information Delta, looking to pick up our IF4 to Cork and we're parked at the general aviation ramp. Firefly 235, Shannon Control, hello, cleared to Cork. Corum 3, Bravo, departure runway 24. Initial climb altitude 5,000 feet. Squawk 6464. Cleared to Cork via the Kuru 3 Bravo departure, runway 24. Initial climb, altitude 5,000 feet, squawk 6464 for Firefly 235. Firefly 235 feet back, correct. Hello, hello. Starting on March 11, 2024, we carry on from our VO4 ATC series as we introduce our IF4 ATC series. Over the next 10 weeks, we're going to learn all the phraseology, what to say, when to say it. We get to refine our IF4 skills be it for general aviation or even the airliners. All our voice communication will take place on Discord. We even have some custom ATIS. Cork Airport Information Foxtrot 1700 Zulu Wind 320 at 18 knots. All the course material, including a comprehensive ground school document, will be available over on our website, twotonemurphy.com, that also includes the course registration and flight planning submission. We've created a custom network to operate all our flights on. And the beautiful thing, this is for Xbox and PC pilots. Take the next step in enhancing your flight simulation experience with an IF4 ATC course, where we take you from the entry level when it comes to your communication skills, all the way up to completing your very first flight on the VATSIM network. For those pilots on Xbox, we got you covered. We'll operate a full check ride using our own infrastructure. Our objective, make sure everyone passes. This is all about community helping community, people helping people. Regardless of your skill, regardless of your capability, we're here to help. You're gonna learn, you're gonna have fun, we're going to do something awesome. For more information, head on over to twotonemurphy.com forward slash IF4. Be sure to register for the course as one lucky winner will win a 12 month subscription to Navigraph for free. So I hope to see you on March 11th, 2024 at 2000 Zulu time on YouTube and on Twitch as we start our IF4 ATC course.